Welcome to the Garage Network Podcast. Join us and the occasional special guest as we discuss everything automotive, from fixing cars as a technician, owning an automotive workshop or business, overall work-life balance, and even the occasional laugh. In this episode of TGN Talks, we were joined by Clinton Brett from Diesel Help Australia. We talk about his career path in the diesel repair industry and how he founded Diesel Help Australia, who is now offering training and technical assistance to workshops and technicians all around Australia and New Zealand. So we hope that you guys enjoy this and that you get something out of it. Um, when we made the, the ultimate online training course, which was bizarrely before, I don't know if that's a word, but just strangely, 2019, we made the ultimate common rail guide diagnostic course online and I got my nephew up to do the filming of it. So we paid a very high, highly intelligent film photographer to film it. In fact, he's actually qualified mechanic for Toyota, but he left, his, left the job at mechanic because once he finished his qualification, unfortunately, one of the first things, uh, some, I won't, you know, be careful here because I'm about to do a training course Hosted by a Toyota dealership in a week and a half. So I've got to be careful what I say here. But um, the dealership, unfortunately, was one of those dealerships just, just turns around apprentices. Like, great, we've got you in for four years. We're gonna we're gonna pay you to we're gonna pay you bugger all to do servicing on cars that will charge the customers full price for. But anyway, he left and, and took up photography, which when he first wanted to become a mechanic, he said, Uncle, I want to be a mechanic. You know, I want to keep the family tradition, the generation. You know, like he was a sixth generation of our family mechanic. Yeah, so, wow. And uh, I said, look, to be honest, Price, it's not for you. I, I really think stick with your photography. Anyway, he was, he did his trade and he said to me, he said, I'll never forget when you said to do that, you know, that I'm really good at that. You know, do what you're good at. Mm. You know, take up the career that you're good at. Don't take up a career that you're, Somebody tells you you're dumb, you should be a mechanic, or, you know, that really annoys me in our trade when people say that, oh, you know, when we were at school, they said, oh, you're not very smart, Clint, so you should just be a mechanic. Well, fuck me, look at, look at the intelligence involved today to work out how to fix a car. You've got to be bloody smart and switched on, you know, and they shouldn't, you know, it's, it's a bad thing. But, you know, at the end of the day, and he did the filming for our online training course and then he did me the favor of recording all the bleeps all the all the stuff ups oh, that, and then he sent it to me it's hilarious there's just there's a lot of c-bombs in there yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, can add some, we can add some bleeps into this you know we can uh, we can make this um explicit if, if you like what we'll do clean every now and then let's just look shocked and what I'll do, I'll add a beep in like like he said something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Not me. No, Clinton. No, not me. I don't swear. Yeah. Yeah, you don't. Never, never. <laughs> so, um, uh, Costa. Um, you better oh, turn off me. Who, Hang who, on a second. Hang on, guys. I've got to actually turn down my hearing aids. <laughs> the, all the alerts come through. Can you notice? Can you see my new fashion I'm wearing at all? Can you notice on screen? Can you see that I've got hearing aids in? No, you cannot. Uh, hey, I didn't hear a word he said. <laughs> There's a tiny little cable running there. I feel like a security guard. Really? Uh, for uh, the queen, you know. So, But um, I've got to turn down. I've just got to disconnect them because while I'm talking to you, I'm getting these bloody alerts going off and I could actually have a conversation. You you know, you would even know. It's not like the typical earpiece like you've got hanging out of your ear there, Costa. Mm. It's, um, it's bloody good quality. If you have trouble hearing, I highly recommend hearing aids. Who would have thought? I think I might, I think I might need some of those. Anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, okay, he, so I've turned that off. Are you, all fixed. are you all fixed now, Clinton? I'm all fixed. Well, so, um, according to myself, maybe not I, my wife. I, I guess <laughs> because it would be a good time to uh, uh, introduce introduce uh, each other. And uh, sure. I'm yep. Jeff. Um, that's Costa. I'm Costa. There. And obviously, and, we've got our special guest hey, today, Costa. which is Mr. Clinton Brett from Diesel Help Australia. How are you? I was just about to ask, who's Clinton Brett? 
But now, now you confirmed it. So do you like um, the that that sounded really professional, didn't it? It really did, yeah. yeah thanks. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks, gentlemen. Um, and I don't know whether I should say, well, it feels really weird saying gentlemen. So thanks, guys. Hey, um, <laughs> I've been I, I've been I've been actually called a gentleman before. It was followed by may you please leave, but hey, I was still called a gentleman. <laughs> So, uh, no, thanks, guys. And, of course, uh, I do know you two fellas because both of you guys have actually attended our training course. Or I have. I like to say ours because Diesel Help Australia is a, a, a company and even though it's, it's my um, workings and it was a business that I started up from, from nothing it was, and it was pretty much me at the time in the first early days. And I say ours because it's now the wife and... Uh, you know, a couple of backup, um, couple of backup technicians, so to speak. So, but you know, I like to say, you know, not I don't like just using that terminology, I. But, but, um, but you have been to to my training course, which is uh, <laughs> something that I did develop from the start, and you know, it was and it was great because um, who would have thought? You know, like you know, it's great to be able to when you have people who attend training. Um, you know, I know a lot of people attend all different types of training around the world, you know, not just automotive and all that, but the fact that you can have people attend your training and then you can continue on to build these great relationships afterwards and, and large networks and, and talk to people and have dinner with them or end out for dinner with you, you know, which is great, or you invited us out for dinner and we went and... Um, Jeff, you still owe me a dinner. I never got invited we'll to that there. dinner, Clinton. That's all I'm <laughs> going to say. I, I was uh, I was ready to go. Costa didn't. Costa and, forgot to CC me into and, and, and for good reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but in but in saying that, you know, like um, you know, Jeff, Jeff. Funnily enough, Jeff was invited to invited as a guest to my training course that I ran at three one three Automotive, which is your other. Partnering nice Brian, Mike Caramello Bear. Um, <laughs> Caramello. <laughs> my apologies, Mike, and I don't know if I've ever said that. I, I, I really but, like uh, it. I, I, from, I like from it. Day I one, I can never pronounce his name, and I do have, I'm not going to expose everyone's names tonight. <laughs> that will be over a couple of drinks over a period of time, and there, I do have names. How This is how I remember people. I'm terrible at remembering names, and and that's one of my biggest, probably one of my shortfalls. When people say, what's your weaknesses and your strengths? My weakness is terrible at remembering names, but faces, not a problem. Mm. So if I can try to connect, okay, well, I just know his name, just like Caramello Bear. So um, <laughs> Jeff was a guest at, um, at one of our training sessions then. So, but anyway, we got off topic there because we were just saying g'day to each other and I kind of just go on this tangent. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what it's all about. <laughs> Look, I, I'm just I'm thinking about changing Mike's name in, in my phone now to Mike Caramello. I just think it's got a better ring to it. You know, it's it's better than Carnamola. No, it's, um, got a, it's got a sweet ring to it. It, it does, it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sweet yeah. and then then sour. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I believe I'm not the only one that referred him as Caramello. I was speaking to someone recently. I cannot remember who it is, but I said, "Oh yeah, I've um." You know, we ran a, ran a training course as, um, mm. at Mike's Garage 313. I think somebody was asking me, oh, have you ever been down to Mike's Garage at the bottom? I said, yeah, we ran a course there from Mike Caramello. And he cracked up laughing. He said, <laughs> he said he he pretty much said, but he said, oh, I'd call him Caramello Bear too. I said, well, I'm glad not the only one looks his name and puts a different spin on it so it's easy to remember. So, uh, I yeah. saw Mike today and, um, you know, Mike, Mike can be uh, – 100 miles an hour m most times you see him and and he just wouldn't stop smiling i'm like what, what's up with you mike what, what every, every time i look to him he's just got this like cheesiest grin and like i'm like what what's up what, what's wrong what's happened you know tell me tell me what tell me what you've done and and he was like no no i'm fine anyway it works out it was his birthday of the weekend and i'm like oh, yeah, I you've had a birthday back rub so um, <laughs> we are recording. Just, just keep <laughs> look, look. This is this is PG. It's yeah, PG. Yeah. Um, I, I'm pretty sure he's had a birthday back rub, and he had a really good. It was it was a oh, beaming. Good. It was a Mac Caramello was was um, beaming today. It was nice. Oh, good uh, back rub. <laughs> birthday back rub. <laughs> 
Uh, make, sure, make, make, make sure he watches this. <laughs> how old? How, how old? How old is the young Mike? Oh, he, he must be 55. 34. 34. Yeah. 34. <laughs> <laughs> Fair and asks, 34 is always a good age. Yeah, I suppose that really matter how old you are. Once you pass 40, you uh, stop counting. It's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so. so, Clinton. Yes. I have, I think we've spoken in the past, but we haven't gone really deep, deep into why you started off sort of as a mechanic by memory, generational mechanic. So, your, were your. Yeah. Your dad, I think, was a mechanic as well. Yeah, was dad, it? yeah. dad was a uh, dad. In fact, was in our family the first heavy That's mechanic. Right. Yeah, so the That's what it was. Um, I'm trying to look for a picture of our workshop, but floating around somewhere, it might actually. I think it's on our website, mm-hmm. but on our but on the website, there's a picture. Of, um, it's pretty much the family heritage goes back to 1920s. Yeah, cool. Um, back in Oakley, Melbourne. Um, Princess Highway, which I believe now is a pub, ironically. Probably was a pub before, because <laughs> most workshops were a pub. Were pubs back then, that's right. pubs. <laughs> our pubs. And, um, yeah, so it's, you know, I recall the days, uh, you know, it's just one of the, you know, there's, there's fond memories of growing up when you grew up and you always, you know, I'm sure you guys could probably relate, or if you had parents, but it doesn't matter where they worked, you always found your time most of your time, your young age, hanging out at their work, you know. Um, it was more exciting hanging out at dad's work, but even granddad's, you know, and me pop, you know, I don't call granddad, just be pop, you know. And But, yeah, he's um, – it, it pretty much stems back here. I'm, I was the fifth generation, but funny enough, like, you know, my dad, you know, unfortunately passed away at a very young age, uh, at 56, back in 01. And I always, you know, when I talk about this, I do get a bit emotional because – you know, my father very close to him and that. But, you know, I'll never forget when he said he was trying his hardest to stop me from being a mechanic. He said, I don't want you to be a mechanic. It's shit hours. It's long hours. It's dirty. It's crap money. No one pays you. You know, they never pay you on time. You're always paying out. You know, you're, you're, you're paying for everything up front and then they don't pay you straight away. You're always out of pocket, you know, and, you know, he probably didn't have the best business um, set up, you know. When I think back and I think and I look at how businesses are run today and, but you know, we didn't have, he didn't have access to so many networks as we have access today and I think that's what's great, what I love about seeing what you guys do. Shit, my phone's still ringing now. I've turned it off the silence in my ears. It's coming out bloody vocal on here. I'll turn these ones down. Um <clears throat> But, yeah, he always said, I don't want you to do it. And even back in the late 80s when, shit, I've got to count now and work out how old I am because I'm I'm pushing on 50 myself 34, next 34, year. 34, 34, 34. No, I'm actually, <laughs> no, Costa, I'm actually looking forward to the 50. The big yeah, 5-0, mate. It's another fun. big party celebration from the tent one I did 10 years ago when I was 40. Um, but when I was, you know, finishing school and when I was finishing, I actually was going to high school, weirdly enough, and I don't know where my mum got this from, but I went to a school like a technical school. I don't know if you ever heard of technical schools, but back in the day there was actually trade-associated schools. So you had right. high schools and you had technical schools. High schools for the really smart kids apparently, and yet I know a lot of people went to high school and don't even have a, a career or even have any success behind them. But that's another story. I don't believe it's anything to do with the school. I believe it's your upbringing and all that and, and your motivation. But I went to tech school and the tech school reckoned I was too smart for tech school. So they sent me to a high school. Um, and um, I don't believe I was too smart for tech school. I think it was more about I was out of control I, um, <laughs> too hard. Too school. hard basket. Let's yeah. send you. They're a bit stricter at high schools than they were because I used to wag at tech and used to get suspended and have to just hang out in the engineering workshop for the week and make and steal things, you know, and welding. Um, <laughs> Great punishment. School. Yeah, that was you get punishment. to play with toys, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You get to play with machinery. That's a punishment. <laughs> so they sent me to high school. Anyway, at high school, you had to do the VCE at high school, like the year 12, the, the graduation, all that shit. And I struggled, and my old man, anyway, at the time the recession was hitting, I forget what, whatever recession it was, 
and there was no jobs. And all I wanted to do was be a mechanic. And my dad said, no, no, I want you to finish high school, get your certificate and go and get a really, you know, a well-paid smart job and all that. And uh, it wasn't for me. I didn't pass year 12. I blood through the whole year. I did the exams and it was totally boring. And, um, yeah, I left and I was unemployed for a couple of months and I was trying my best for a job. And the old man finally turned around. Now, he did not want me to come and work for him. He turned around and said, okay. Now, the reason he didn't want me to work for him, and this is, everyone's very different, but my man felt that if I was going to come and work for him in the workshop, so he had a Scania truck regional repair dealership in Albury, New South Wales, and he just, I think he feared more of that, you know, that kind of, um, there, there's some workshops where the sons will work and then the other staff will get the shits and there's a, you know, I think, to be honest, I think my old man could see that I was a a bit of a, a boss. Like he, he probably, like I'm trying to think of that word where I probably was going to come in there and uh, I was going to piss a lot of people off. <laughs> so yeah. I think. You're motivated. He, you're yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he thought, no, no, I'm, I'm going to try to get you to do a job somewhere else. So anyway, it was about it. He did it up. There was no jobs around. And he just, he decided, okay, well, that's it. I've tried to convince you every way possible to be anything other than a mechanic. Not, you want to be a mechanic? All right, come and work for me. Anyway, and I don't think he was real fond for it because a couple of days later, I get a phone call from a group, one of those group apprentice mobs in Melbourne, and because I, I grew up in Melbourne originally. Yeah. And um, they they offered me a job in the council as a, and of course, when you say council, I think, oh, what a blood job. Well, it is. That's why I didn't <laughs> last there very long. I was there for about three years, did my apprenticeship as a heavy earth moving mechanic. Now, one of the benefits that I did get from there was learning about hydraulics. Mm. And I was bored, though, because the council, it was a very boring job. There was not a lot of work to be done. You know, we were trying to break things more than anything to to create more work. (laughs) So it was just, so a job came up in diesel fuel injection. Okay, so diesel fuel injection is a specialised trade. It's not like the average diesel mechanic. It's working in a very clean environment, although it's always seen as a clean environment. In fact, most um, the advantage is where I'm getting at here is that most diesel fuel injection shops back in the day in the 90s were that's it, that's all they worked on was the fuel pumps, they didn't work on the vehicles at all. They, yeah. Most of them didn't even have a workshop or hoist or anything like that. I went to work for a company that actually did do work, uh, work on the vehicles, they even had a dyno, and um, I was very fortunate to be guided by probably one of the best mentors somebody could ask for getting into diesel fuel injection. Um, a guy by the name of Wayne Baskerville, and some people might know Wayne because he's, I think, now the operations manager of MTQ. So, yeah, so because the company I worked for was a company called BJ Diesel. They got taken over by MTQ, a big company in Singapore. So that's where I went. You know, I was very fortunate to, to be one of those people that I believe is motivated because I was bored working the council. There was an opportunity in diesel fuel injection, mate. And well, again, that, you know, when I think about my dad, when I talk about where I started from, and dad didn't want me to do it because it was a shit job, <laughs> shit pay, dirty work, all that. <laughs> Whose dog was that yours, Costa? <laughs> <laughs> oh, glad to- I'll tell you what, I'm glad having my dog here at the moment. He's been yelping in my ears all day, he wants to come in the door, wants to go out the door. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, so the, the diesel fuel injection was really a game changer very early on. And I was still a young, fresh apprentice, you know, um, in my 20s. And, um, you know, the, I remember my old man saying, well, I'm glad you actually found a different pathway because I now – you know, have a lot of respect for you. And unfortunately, he hasn't, he's not around to have seen, you know, the creation of Diesel Help Australia. So Diesel Help Australia started in 2012, sorry, 2013, because we're coming up to 10 years next year. Um, the, the business was pretty much inspired by what I was seeing from my early days from doing Common Rail. And Jeff, you were doing, like, you would have been doing Common Rail as a young um, 
you know, much younger age than probably what I was. In, in, the, in the 1980s, yeah. It was, uh... Yeah, exactly. And I was saying, <laughs> no, not in the 80s? No, no, no. <laughs> Come on, mate, I thought you were near 50. <laughs> uh, and uh, boo! <laughs> the podcast. No, to, be, to be fair, Jeff, you don't look a day over 60, mate. Oh, it's not but, um, right. Yeah, so the... But the thing is, um, I wasn't at I wasn't at MTQ um, all that long, really. Like I was there. Well, I was there. I was there for um, you know fourteen, nearly fourteen years. Um, but as a qualified person, just on ten years. And the thing is that MTQ was it was holding me back because there was also I become really good at diesel fuel injection, I believe that good that I was so good in the old mechanical stuff and common rail was still very sporadic in Melbourne in the late 90s. Like the first common rail diesels we were doing were Mercedes Sprinters and it was mainly just injectors. And it was either injectors seized in or injectors failing. That's all we've seen or pressure relief valve, seals blowing out and they were very basic. So so nothing has changed. So, yeah, nothing has (laughs) changed. It's just now we've got EGR problems now, <laughs> DPF problems. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I wanted to leave and um, an opportunity came up to, um, I kind of took a hop, skip and a jump. I went by Toowoomba, very short stint at Diesel Care in Toowoomba, running their Toowoomba branch. And um, thing pretty much um, I wanted to, Toowoomba didn't suit me. I left from Melbourne, big city, Big Smoke, Melbourne at Toowoomba. Ironically enough, I live in a much smaller town than Toowoomba now. Yeah, how things change, right? <laughs> Population of 3,000 people where I live. <laughs> Full so, circle. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of a funny circle. But, you know, there was um, – it was a – I was led – I ended up on the Gold Coast, okay? So this is where Common Rail really – really started to impact my life was when I hit the Gold Coast in 2005. And um, 2000 and, yeah, 2000 and, uh, yes, 2005 it was. And I was so young and, I, I, you know, I can't say that word, young, dumb and full of cum. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that. And then, yeah. welcome to Gold Coast. Yeah. At the age of the age of young, dumb and full of cum at the age of 30. Yeah. <laughs> And um, it was. I was lured there by a girl uh, that I met at the, at the races <laughs> out of L- L- Lured, lured. lured. <laughs> if you ever, when you when you come now, you're going to the you're going to Queensland. But one day when you come to the, the real part, of the real as it, I shouldn't say the real part because <laughs> I might get offended by that. Yeah, we've just the the city the folks. I think you've already done that. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> when you come to the rural, and I can't even say that word rural properly. <laughs> <laughs> country races are a hit, okay? If you're a single guy, country races are a hit. Dolby country races, yeah, hooked up with a chick, ended up on the Gold Coast, but, hey, I got smart. As soon as I got on the Gold Coast, I was like, not this relationship's over. This is single man's land for sure. So I became a bachelor for quite a long time, and it was it worked out well because I got, yeah, I, I got lured into a business, and to be honest, the business, uh, and I won't go into full detail because it, it's probably a legal thing I shouldn't really talk about, but let's I was stupid. <laughs> I went in. Hey? Let's not get sued. Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> so don't worry about that. I, I, I've said loads of things. So I've still not been sued. But, yeah. but look, <laughs> I made a very bad decision going into a business with a group of people, and it was really bad de- um, decision because... I think at the end of the day, you know, if you you learn from your first business, you know, I think you probably all relate. You learn from a lot of mistakes. And if you don't learn from your mistakes, and that's what I teach in the common role and that, if you do make a mistake, you know, try not to do it again. And at the end of the day, but the business went quite well for, you know, quite a few years. But I saw that the industry, because we were, so when I went to the Gold Coast, you know, I went from doing maybe one common rail diesel every two weeks in Melbourne to when I landed on the Gold Coast, we're doing four a day. Yeah, well. Um, and then within a couple of weeks or say a few months, and then we employed an English guy. I don't like to admit this, but we employed somebody that was far more knowledgeable in common rail than us, and that was a POM. 
And uh, <laughs> look at look how happy he just got. Look at his oh, smile. Dear. I'm gonna. Well, can we look just timestamp this? Can we just, <laughs> <laughs> that could be the intro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll switch out. I'll, I'll edit this one, cuss. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so Gary, who actually um, who's still in the industry, and um, so Gary still works for my old my old business partner. Look, things are good. Because there was just one business partner we had to get out of the equation and that's what all the, the kind of fallout was. But in the end, I ended up, um, at the time, we were booming with common rail diesel and I still use, you know, this is something I still find myself repeating to the guys when when people ask you, Clint, you know, because the thing is one of the hardest things to sell is to sell yourself and even to the day I'm still calling people, and I don't like cold calling, but I'm still calling people in areas where we're running a training course where we never have before. And we're, we're running a course in September up at Weeper, up in the top end. Like, not it, no one runs training courses up there. As far as I know, no one in the trade has ever run a training course in Weeper. Don't even know where and, that is. And, hey? Don't even know where that is. Oh, Costa. Jeez, mate. Don't even know. Come honest. on. Come Jeff, do you know where Weeper is? It's right at the top end. It's <laughs> right at the top, mate. That's what Costa. he just said. It's right at the top. Well, Costa, right I think the top. you're due for a refresher, mate. Now, yeah. come on, you flew from Sydney to Melbourne. I did. Just I to did. go, and I don't know whether that was for training or just to hang out DFO all weekend and yeah. buy some new clothing. Well, no, what it was, I'll tell you what it was. I got in late on, on finding, that was on my early on trying to learn anything about everything. Yeah. And, and there were, I think you just sold out Sydney. And I don't think we'd even met yet or anything at all. And then okay, yeah. I just heard that, oh, you know, this is a pretty good diesel train. I'm like, okay. If we sold out of Sydney and the only one available was Melbourne. I like, guess yeah, screw it, I'm going to Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't just for the – but it wasn't just for the fashion. It was, it was just for you. It was just for you. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> so it was just for me, mate. You're welcome to come up to Weeper. Yeah, um, yeah. Grab your grab us <laughs> fly in the cans and got another 20 hour drive from cans, you'll be fine. Oh, excellent, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we'll have room in the ute, you can sit in the back with the dogs. <laughs> Lovely, but well, um, I, yes, hang on a minute, it's, it's, it's just you've just reminded me now uh -oh. it was Sang Young that were going to sue me. Oh, oh okay, it was well, Sang Young, that was the other well, company. It's <laughs> you criticized <laughs> what, what you what you do, you drive, Clinton. <laughs> I drive a Sangyong, mate. Yeah, I'm yeah. a very. Um, uh, I'll, I'll very have to try and sh share the podcast. The video. That we did. Sorry, I pressed. He just left. He left us. He's like, yeah, I'm out. I got it. <laughs> I'll show you the podcast. Uh, somebody mentioned Sangyong. It was hey. a Friday night, Friday night live. And, there you go. And I mentioned oh, Sangyong. And um, oh god, why is there it? There you go, now? mate. There's a Sangyong. Look, look at the. Look at the. What a look beast. at the um. What do they call the royal flyover? See the look at the jets. They even that actually looks very cool. Very cool. Red <laughs> arrows. You're, you're talking about the red arrows. Yeah, the red dropping, arrows. Yeah, they would be <laughs> dropping cloud. plenty of bombs there. <laughs> you know, that was an amazing. That was an amazing cloud formation Good over shot. Mackay the other week. It was uh, fantastic. But um, yeah. So the um, yeah, I was talking about before weeper. when I ring weep like. I ring the guys, you know, and the guys, I'm talking to guys that have never heard of me. Uh, one guy in Weeper has heard of me because he actually travelled from Weeper to Innisfail, which is, is like a 25-hour drive. Yeah, wow. And um, and he's actually booked another person on the Weeper course. But anyway, what I was getting at is the guys I was speaking today right up at Bamagar, which is like right at the, right at the tip of Australia. Yeah, right. And uh, they don't know about you, so I'm telling them, you know, I, I've got to convince them. You know, so they are not. Well, I do have to convince them. Like, why? Why would you pay to come and listen to me talk about Common Rail? What do you know about Common Rail? So back on the Gold Coast, we got to a point where we we're doing around about five to ten Common Rail diesel diagnostics a day. Yeah, wow. And that was covering all the OEMs. We had all the OEMs of customers: Volkswagen, Audi, Peugeot. You know, we saw more common rail in 05 to 010 than most other capital cities did because, and this is where I believe I landed the right place at the right time. We had the European market big there for a number of reasons. Um, European vans were the most accessible to underground um, car parks for apartment buildings. The most apartment buildings were on the Gold Coast, plumbing services, laundry services, hospitality services, all that. So we were inundated with traffics. Renault Traffics, Peugeot's, Ford Transits, bloody Ford Transits. What do you drive, Jeff? 
<laughs> so you mentioned you mentioned Renault traffic and, and they were they were ter- they were terrible. But one nine DCI, the the one nine DCRs were a great engine, um, uh, but they uh, they lost it on the M nine R. I mean, I'm pretty sure you know the M nine R, yeah, uh, two liter diesel. Um, they're, well, they're terrible. They they need they need putting where your Sangyong is, and and they need blowing up. <laughs> you can talk. <laughs> Mate, you know, I could tell you now, Jeff, if it wasn't for Ford Transits, I probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> I'm not kidding, right? I, I go back to the early to the late 90s when I the first transits we had to deal with that were released out of the UK. And I recall the phone conversation with Delphi because we we're a Delphi dealer for many years. I've been for all the companies I work for, for um, in MTQ to our diesel care and our business on the Gold Coast, Diesel Centre Gold Coast, we were always authorised Delphi, Bosch, Denso, mm. uh, Siemens Continental and another company called Stanodyne, which not people are familiar with Stanodyne, but they're an American diesel fuel injection manufacturer. And Delphi, which was formerly Lucas CAV, so they've changed names several times, they... Um, they they brought out a fuel pump on this Ford Transit, the early model, which I forget the model, but it was a 96, 97 model. And, oh, man, I tell you what, that was the biggest shit box. If anyone ever refers to, oh, crap, Tevers, oh, Ford Ranger, I still say to the day that early model Ford, when you're pumping out 40 fuel pumps a week, no kidding, 40 changeover pumps on the average, like, booming weeks at end, my, my boss had us working on Sundays just to keep up with demand for pumps that are shitting themselves at 2,000 kilometres, by is the this way, the um, is, is this a chain-driven pump that we're talking about here? No, or, this was a belt-driven, a belt-driven the pump. Epic, epic fuel pump on the 2-litre, or 2.5, 2, 2.5 belt drive. You know the great, you know the best thing about those? When they broke the drive belt, Mate, you could just get away with putting a set of um, used to bend, used there, to mate. bend the push rods. So you're, so hang on a minute, you're talking about the two point five uh, yeah, direct injection uh, uh, two two five di. They were a one, yeah. fantastic engine. Like in, oh, in, in, you in sound Australia, like works at Delphi. <laughs> in Australia, you've got two turbocharged ones. The only place, the only place in the UK that had turbocharged transits was was the police. We had, we had natural <laughs> aspirated ones. God damn things were good. You, they, the, the engines lasted longer than the bodies. Actually, the naturally aspirated ones, I think, might have been the ones with the old Bosch, the Bosch rotary pump on it, for memory. But no, we had, look, they were good because I actually learned a lot of stuff about electronics with those. You know what I learned about electronics? That all the electronic faults we had were all mechanical failures. And that's yeah, where right. I then took into, and when we saw electrical fault, they did have electrical faults, but usually just worn out wiring or rats had been in there, you know. And I know electrical stuff does fail. We see it more and more these days, but still, you know, and then going on to the common rail diesel and then, you know, it came to a point where we had so much work that all our work, we hardly had any retail. Yeah. The majority of our work at diesel at, at diesels in the Gold Coast was trade. You know, we probably had 20% retail, which was a mixture of heavy um, bus industry, trucks, and but most light vehicles that came in all came from other workshops. So yeah. there was an opportunity to get out of the business where we came at a we came at a crossroad. Okay. One of us wanted to spend a million dollars to keep our Bosch signs and Denso and I, mean, I don't care, you can keep this in there, don't have to cut this out. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, they wanted us to fork out anything between half a mil to a million dollars on investing in test benches and everything to test common rail pumps and injectors. We did buy some stuff. We ended up selling it as a fire sale later on. But um, <clears throat> we, we had a knack of testing everything on the vehicle. You know, the majority of common rail stuff can be tested on the vehicle. And now, this I love, being able to, like, get involved with networks like the TAP network for many years, I learned so much more about scopes and with our members. You know, our members is a significant part of my learning, which a lot of them don't probably realise, but I learned so much from our members. You know, I was speaking to one of our members in New Zealand today, um, and um, he's on the South Island, and 
we do a lot of diagnostics on CX-5s, and I found out today what we do. He's done about 20 now. He buys and sells them all the time. CX-5s, oh, God. <laughs> what, are the, what are they worth? You know, anyone out there is buying a CX-5 Mazda, do not buy the diesel one. It yeah. is an absolute <coughs> schmozzle. It's I a think they've had an extended... Dogs. Breakfast. Didn't, didn't they extend the warranty on the engines or something? Because they were just yeah, so twenty year warranty, mate. Yeah, <laughs> is, it, yeah. is this the one that has an issue with a vacuum? Vacuum, or? yeah, it kills the vacuum. We didn't, we what's didn't get that? this on old it, transits. It, it, what's that? it kills the transits. vacuum pump. You mean? Yeah, like, it kills something on the vacuum pump. Yeah, something goes. It on kills the, the vacuum oh. pump, but it kills everything else. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> something. If I remember rightly, something something breaks up in the vacuum pump. Yeah, there was or, a report today we were yeah. that we were talking about. And oh, think, just 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 ring me, Clinton. You've got my number. <laughs> <laughs> Je- Jeff help Jeff help Australia. Jeff, yeah, Jeff help. <laughs> I've run out of beer. Here I come. I've run out of beer. Yeah. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah. So, so the whole point, you know, with diesel help, it pretty much come to a point. But I didn't leave. I didn't start from there. I left the business and I went and had some experience outside the diesel fuel injection world. I went. You'll love this, Jeff. I actually spent six months as a service manager at Sangyong Dealer. Yeah, right. That's where the love <laughs> comes from. Cut it, cut. I, cut. I, 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 cut. I, never, I never started recording just in case. <laughs> 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 Sangyong head office. Bloody Sangyong, I'd be upset if I found one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, go on. <laughs> I must admit, I must admit, I wish they would change their name. It's, it's a terrible name for a company, so Sangyong, like. It's just so hard to pronounce and it sounds so awkward, but, you know, that's one of those things. Um, but, I mean, yeah, the... It works for you. You do a lot of driving in that thing. I've seen you, crew, like, I've seen your, mate, your it is um, a, yeah. videos and photos. It looks like you do some case. I do, mate. And, you know, that new, I say it's still new because it's um 21 model, but I've just clocked over 30,000 on it, but... We didn't do many in the first six months because we still weren't doing much um, face-to-face training. But, yeah, this year we kicked back into it. But that last model of mine, that did 200,000, you know, without a a fault, yes. so to speak. Um, you know, it was, it was pretty much faultless. But, it, you know, a lot of it comes down, like I say to everyone, you know, it's if a driver diesel house is supposed to be driven, that was the thing that we saw yeah. is that most light vehicles are not, you know, it comes down to it. That's how diesel help came about. Is that um, um, and I also did twelve months. Um, I didn't. I left Sangyong after six months because the local is Volkswagen it, because group, you couldn't stand their warranties. And then um, <laughs> no, 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 no. It was actually a proton dealer as well, no, okay. and a pro and a used car dealership. And the company was so dodgy that. Three months after I left, because I left because I could see, I, I knew how business was run by that time. And I'd pretty much come out of a business where, I, you know, we'd had some few bloody fallings out in the background, but I kind of knew a lot more how a business run. And, um, but yeah, this business actually went bankrupt and they, they shot through. They owed um, three or four million bucks to local trade and all that. But I'd left before that happened, but I actually got poached by the Volkswagen dealership. So I've gone from straight into the deep end with um, gone from diesel shop straight into a service manager of Volkswagen commercial, which is a pretty big leap. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things, though, you know, with both that experience with both the service manager role, <clears throat> what probably made me the better service manager is because I didn't come from dealership world and I've landed straight in there. And... I've done exactly what the manufacturer wanted me to do. The manufacturer wants you, not the dealership, the dealership wants you to make money um, and they don't want to do warranty work because warranty work takes a lot of paperwork. But I'm a stickler for paperwork. I've got to say, I, I love paperwork and, and it's, it's stupid, I know. Thankfully, these days, my paperwork involves just writing articles and lots of bulletins. That's yeah. most of my paperwork. It's enjoyable stuff. But, um, yeah, so the, the time in Volkswagen, um, you know, it's incredible. Like the local trade would miss out on Volkswagen work because we would get stuff in because we would honour their warranty work. 
So at the time, in 2011, a Volkswagen dealer would be paying $160. Uh, sorry, would be paid. So, so you're, you're in, you're in uh, 2011, you were dealing with the uh, twin turbo diesel. I can't remember the engine code Amarok, now. Amarok first came out in 2011. Transporter. Yeah, Transporter and the yeah. Amarok first came out as well. But the... Um, but we would, they would do. There's a great thing about Volkswagen now, and I think um, there's a lot of oh yeah, a lot of manufacturers, even though Volkswagen have not given themselves a good name in the last with the old diesel yeah. gate. God, how many times do I get asked? That's a frequently asked question. Clint, what's yeah, your thoughts course. on diesel gate? I think it's a bloody. It was fantastic. <laughs> and I agree. It was, it was awesome. It was fucking smart. <laughs> and I still say to the day, it was the bloody people that work for te- te- bloody. Elon Musk paid those colleagues. Oh, that, that, hang on a minute. Now, I man. didn't say anything, Elon. It was Cl- Clinton said it. Clinton said it. I didn't say it. <laughs> There's definitely a conspiracy there. It was the electric car industry trying to shut yeah, what, down why the is, biggest... Mo- uh, <laughs> why is Elon engine. Musk, why has he not got a, a car transporter, a Tesla car <laughs> transporter? Come on, put your money where your mouth is. Stop going to the moon. Yeah. Make an electric truck. <laughs> you say stop going to the moon. <laughs> Clint, Clint said that. Well, he's too busy going to the moon, isn't he? Bloody idiot. But, um, but yeah, like, um, the, so what are the benefits? Uh, just I'm trying that, to change our, the subject. Our, <laughs> our power's been cut. Everything's happened. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to change the subject. Yeah. Um, yeah, go on. I could have a drink here. Yeah. yeah. It's getting yeah. hot. Are you getting hot in here? I'm going to put this on there. I mean, to, to be fair, Clinton did start it. Yeah, but you've just taken the cake, mate. Yeah, well, you just, it's what it is. Hang so, on. so hang you on, on. Hang on a sec. I'm seriously going to change this over to AC. It's, it's getting nervous because I'm waiting, just waiting for the Elon Musk. <laughs> Any free lawyers to send through. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so what was I get at? Um, to Volkswagen. Anyway, Volkswagen are really good with their goodwill and all that. Yeah. So we did a lot of warranty stuff. But, look, at the end of the day, um, again, I clashed with um, I clashed with the bosses and uh, it was time to move on there. <laughs> so, <laughs> But, um, yeah, diesel help started not long after that because I actually got hired by a company that was a diesel fuel injection specialist like we were on the Gold Coast, and they were not doing common rail diesel in 2012. I mean, wow. who would have thought? Wow. They weren't doing it. The reason we weren't doing it is they didn't have anyone confident to work <laughs> on it. So about a week after, how do you mute your dog like that by pressing a button? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a, one of them robotic dogs. You know, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's actually a Tesla supplied. Around. It's a Tesla's prototype. It's a Tesla dog. Dog. Yeah. <laughs> That's why yeah, it apparently, apparently, it's, apparently it's on its way to uh, far north Queensland now. To <laughs> yeah, I've actually just plugged him into charge. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'd come to far north Queensland, but it probably wouldn't bloody make it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, but yeah, they, um, so I was doing some work for them and uh, they pretty much come to a point. They said, Clint, we can't afford to pay you anymore. So, um, Clint, you're really good at what you do. And uh, so I was actually inspired by a number of people who said, you know, what you do, you're teaching other people about common rail diesel in the most basic layman's terms. Um, you know, I was teaching a lot of light vehicle petrol mechanics that were actually working. This diesel fuel injection specialist had a heap of light vehicle mechanics. None of them were qualified diesel. I think one was qualified diesel. The rest were all light vehicle mechanics. And, um, you know, the biggest thing from that was realising that, you know, and I kind of knew it, the, the writing was on the wall. You know, light vehicle mechanics didn't sign up for diesel. You know, they didn't go to trade school to learn about diesel and um, that's my biggest focus is, is educating everyone from not so much looking at what, you know, how the OEMs do it. It's about from that experience, like just trying to simplify it and, and making it so much easier. And look, everyone's, it's great. There's so many other, tra- there's a lot of training out there. Um, and well, there's not a lot of training. I won't know that's a lot. There's not a lot of diesel diagnostic training, but there's alternative there's other guys that are delivering training, um, like you guys that do the scope training as such, and like Brennan Sorensen from, from TAT, 
magnificent training and I've done, oh, you know, I would love to be able to do what we did a couple of years ago together. Like um, this was all before COVID. So many good things happened before COVID and I want to bring good things back. Now that we've got through COVID, geez, man, you keep glitching. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's you're disappearing, sun, it's, mate. You're it's dis- the uh, Sun Yong connection. <laughs> I was going to say, keep me sold in Tesla. That's what happens. It takes away your battery. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? Cosmo? Yeah, I'm I, seeing on you. Look, I, I'm seeing it. I, I turn. I, I, I uh, changed the lights before in case it was. Like, I thought it was like a camera issue, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, yes, I've, 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 I've pissed on. I've, I've, I've Elon pissed off knows. Elon Musk. Elon knows. So, just, sorry, uh, sorry, Elon. Sorry, Elon. Hang on. So, I tell um, Elon, I'll put a transit engine in one of your Teslas and <laughs> it'll all be good. <laughs> how do you turn off the background thing? Hang on. How do you turn off the... Here we go. None. There, there you go. go. There's my background. Uh, studio. Studio. Click to a studio. Now it looks pretty filthy at the moment. Hmm. We're actually... Um, we're packing and get ready because we've got Vassa this weekend, oh, which yes. would be good to catch up with Brennan and Jeff. Um, yeah, we'll show another view. Back of the race car view there. Um, so I've I've heard um, I've heard there's a, another um, extreme event going on in Brisbane this weekend. There is, I believe. A... And what extreme is that? Extreme um, uh, my was... wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> I would not. I would be. Surprised. How does he know? How does he know? <laughs> I say in my in my suitcase, I have pick, packed a lot of see, packets the, of jelly. The, the little town that I'm from, we, we, it was actually quite famous for mud wrestling. But that's for another story. Really? Jeff, I, 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 didn't, I didn't tell you, Jeff. I've actually packed a few, fair few packets of jelly in my suitcase. So, okay. Um, jelly, anyway, jelly I'm wrestling or okay. jelly shots. Oh, we just look. If you're making that connection, mate, I don't know why. <laughs> I just like to eat jelly. God, it, oh, it, I, I it, never forget. We you cannot know, publish this. The... We cannot publish this. Yeah. Have you ever been to jelly wrestling? Uh, <laughs> never. Uh, there was a hesitation there. I'm not saying did you participate in yourself. Have you ever been to jelly no, no, wrestling? I think, I think, I think Costa sponsored it. Yeah, I would have no, no, no idea what you're talking about. It must be this weird thing that I don't know about. Yeah. Oh, look, I remember back in the days of Melbourne nightclubs back in the 90s being going to jelly wrestling and there was always two or three chicks with their clothing on, their bikinis on. So, yeah, that was fond memories, actually, yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, <laughs> Sorry, go on, move, 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 move just on. for a moment. Yeah, you're like looking move up there. <laughs> um, so um, I've been on in Australia for uh, just uh, sort of five and a half years, and I, I really see a lot a lot of uh, techs or workshops shy away from diesel. And I remember when I, you know, it was in my first few months, and I'm like, what. Oh, we, we don't bother with diesel. I'm like, why is it's it's money? Like it needs to be Bobby. fixed. Some somebody's got to fix it. And uh, I'll, I'll be honest, Jeff. That's that's the reason why I actually went to Clinton's training. Mm. I was, I'll be honest, I was scared of it. You know, all I knew in my head was, wow, a hundred thousand psi. I'm gonna die if I touch this. You know, not really understanding much more what it what it meant to be honest. And and we knew that yeah, we'll service them, and that's it. It was a fault. You had to go to the specialist diesel shop. Sorry. Well, first thing I'd say to you, Costa, is, uh, you know, been a pom where we had to work on anything and everything, otherwise you didn't get paid, is don't be scared. I'm not scared anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm saying this well, well, I, I know, but just in general, don't be scared. Yeah. You know, if, if it's new, if... Um, if learn, I'm scared, learn. I call... Now I know if I'm scared, I'll call Jeff. No, no, you call Clinton. I call Clinton. Sorry, you I'm call Clinton. Clinton. Hang on. It's, it's a three-way conversation. Yeah. Also, you know you know about the membership. Well, yeah, what do you I'll, know about? I'll, I'll call, I'll call, all right, I'll call you guys both on three-way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, what I could do, Costa, if you like, I'll send you a test case. Um, you might, you might. We're looking. We're scouting around at the moment for another backup technician. Oh, excellent. So it actually fags. You know what? Here's a here's a thought. What I was saying the other day about um, to you about running like a um, diagnostic challenge in Brisbane. Mm-hmm. That's what we should do. Clinton scouting for a new backup tech. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever passes gets the job. <laughs> exactly. It's not just the diagnostic um, challenges. There's a the um, jelly wrestling challenge. <laughs> So what is, can I get how many a jelly role? shots? How many jelly shots get you down? And can you please email me a job description? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do you how do you even 
type that up. Don't ever do it. <laughs> <laughs> Must be good at jelly wrestling. Uh, I'm going to have to Google just jelly wrestling, by the way. Um, but I'll, I'll do it tomorrow when I'm at Costa shop. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll use this as uh, use my yeah, use yeah. my IP. But yeah, so um, so speaking about that, yes, I did hear there was quite a big event that um has, has really put me in a compromising position because I've been thinking, you know. How can I? How can I um, piss off from the uh, ball on, uh, which is that uh, this bloody wonderful ball, which my wife is probably one of the very few balls that she gets to go along to because normally I'm going to them and she doesn't do these trips with me. And um, so you have the Vassa ball. How can I, you know, skip away from that? But uh, what time's a network event start in Brisbane? So we are a starting bug here. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Might as well. So, oh, this is going to air before after that, anyways. But still, that's okay. Oh, so well. yeah. So the plan is Jeff and I will be getting there early and, and seeing a few shops around Brizzy um, on the Friday. But then the Saturday, nine a.m. to about I don't know. I want to say two, three o'clock, something like that. So sort of, yeah, until yeah, until it until it, until it ends. But like we like you said earlier, we're going to have a few um, a few hard cases to try and solve. Have a bit of a, you know, how would you do this? What tool would you use? Sort yep. of situation, you know, would you use a test light? Would you use a AM clamp? You know, if a test light, test light which one? LED or incandescent? Yep. You know, um, a bit of, you know, using what you have in the workshop to sort of diagnose a car at hand is sort of what we're trying to aim for. Um, yep. Then obviously followed by our normal networking, you know, get for lunch, dinners and all that sort of stuff that we love. Oh, to nice. Do. Wrestling. So Talk a bit of shop, no jelly wrestling, unfortunately. <laughs> um, that's that's just for when Jeff and I get back to the room. Oh. <laughs> I, can't, I don't want to picture that. Are you sharing the same room? We were. No, we were we've got sure. our own rooms, but he's coming over for a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to wait for the jelly to set. Yeah, going to wait for the jelly to I got to say, Jeff, do you want to take that challenge? Do you want to take that challenge I sent you um, before last weekend, the Nissan V9X challenge? Do you want to give that to them? Put that up in front of them and say, "Work this one out." Well, yeah, where would you start? Well, yeah, well, yeah mate. I, I, I the petrol, the petrol, and diesel. I spoke to them today, and um, they ran it on the Eliminator. The eliminator. Hang on. Cross over to the eliminator. <laughs> <laughs> it's got He's got a lot of service, isn't it? It's like, got a to go. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go on, I'm all. <laughs> <laughs> said, no, I didn't bring a picture of the eliminator. Um, but, yeah, they ran on the eliminator to get it running a bit better. And, of course, you know, they know the rules with petrol and diesel. But, yeah, that would have been 9X. And I just spoke to him today. So, the, you know, one of our members in Adelaide and um, – he said, "Oh, by the way, Glenn." He said, um, "He said it definitely. He said definitely threw me a, a bit of a a bit of a um, refresher type thing." He said he'd only just been telling me, and after that, when I said to him, so they logged the job in. I called him up, and within a couple of minutes, I had him going out there to check if it had petrol in it, and he was like blown away. And he's like. Oh, she's, you know, that is definitely worth the investment. You know, these will help, you know. And he always, look, he's a great member and he's always, all their guys, their rule of thumb is in their workshop is that, you know, they, they didn't, none of his guys in the workshop, you know, did sign up for diesel. They're experienced on diesel from over the years. Look, they've been a member maybe three, four years now. Uh, they're a very big uh, remapping company in, in Adelaide. They're very good at what they do. Um, they understand, you know, the rules of engagement of remapping. They don't go deleting, you know, emission systems as such. And, um, you know, they do a lot of diagnostics. They do a lot of tuning in that. But this V9X had a couple of fault codes that were just, you know, it's, it's these codes that often come up on vehicles that are nothing to do with the fault whatsoever. They're actually to do with the, the system itself. The person's got their foot down. The thing's lost power, so it comes up with a pedal sensor code, throws another random code there. Cruise control. Everyone that every every V nine X that I've seen has a problem. Logs a cruise control fault, even if the cruise control is not on. <laughs> I don't get it, you know. So, but um, yeah, he logged it in, and he was just telling me. He said, "Oh, you know, God, imagine that petrol." He said, "I'll never forget the day out of high ace, and that got me stumped." I thought. No, this thing hasn't got petrol in it. And sure enough, I had petrol in it. And so, yeah, he was a bit thrown by it. But 
I sent it to Jeff the other day on Friday, a bit of a test case for him to see how he worked it out. And but I did. I made the mistake by saying, "Don't, <laughs> don't, don't." You know, I just sent him, but I should have said, "Don't do anything. Ring me up on Monday." But he was quick to it, and he said, because it said, I think the job login said it was um, it was starting and running, but it was stalling out at three thousand RPM, and it was blowing a lot of grey, a lot of white smoke, and all that. And Jeff's come back and said, "Check if it's got diesel in the tank." And the way that I read that, I thought. No, you idiot. Of course, it's got diesel. It's running. <laughs> so, so I, I had a sleepless night about Friday night, <laughs> and um, and I felt rude because uh, Clint sent me this test case in the afternoon, and, and I didn't get to it till late at night because um, uh, Costa works me really hard, and um, and, and an email too much email, information. You know, just, mate. just make sure it's actually got diesel in the tank. <laughs> Not like the level of diesel, but <laughs> yeah. like the, the fuel diesel. And, and uh, because Clinton's from the uh, lives on the Gold Coast, uh, sorry, because he's a Queenslander. Uh, I don't live on the Gold Coast. I don't live on the Gold Coast because because uh, because Clinton lives in the far north Queensland. Um, <laughs> he, he didn't understand my message, my, my reply, <laughs> and he basically told me to go and suck one and um, come back. And so he did. <laughs> So, so Saturday morning, you know it was a sleepless very, night. It was, I was very diplomatical. I, I, very so diplomatic called it. I, said, when it comes I don't, to I don't care messages. what I don't care what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. Ignore what your missus Jody says. I said I <laughs> think this car's got petrol in the tank, and like he's like, "Hallelujah, yes, you've got it." I'm like, Clinton, you've given me a sleepless night thinking I've missed something. I'm uh, ignore the fault codes. <laughs> I think this has got petrol in the tank. But I didn't actually put that in the email because I thought he'd have seen it, you know. I thought he'd get it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I read your mind, mate. I was just uh, thanks, Clinton. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Sir. But you know, but the point with that though, and this all I love. I sent you an is, invoice. <laughs> that that brought that raised that raised a very valuable point, like what diesel helps about. Like I get a few people that join up diesel help and go, oh, is it? Um, is it like an online forum and all that? I said, no, no. I said, <clears throat> you'll just be speaking with one of the techs. I said, the reason why is it takes out a lot of the, um, a lot of time spent when you're reading text. It can be, it can be very misunderstanding. Some people can get really, uh, probably a little bit more, bit, I find a little bit too passionate where they become a little bit, where I think in some cases, and I know myself, I, I will admit to it, egos you know there are as much as many of us won't admit we got egos but if you didn't have an ego like really where's the motivation there like it's got to be but you've got to you've got to find that you've got to cut off that ego and that's why i find that what i'm getting at is talking to our members on the phone the amount of times i can it's really weird i've got this weird way of picking up body language without seeing people, you know, like just by the way they talk, their mannerism. I mean, don't, I've got no chance, you know, ever talking to someone in a medical sense about what their problem is over the phone. That's a different story, you know, but when you're talking to mechanics, you can tell when they're having a busy day. You can tell when they're having a shit of a day. You can just tell when, I can actually tell when somebody's at the counter next to them while I'm talking on the phone waiting for them. It's just, you know, you can just you can just tell when what the mood that somebody's in, you know, when they they log the job in, and one of the ways that I know what mood they're in is when they do log the job in. Some of the members will just skip over the finer details, and they'll just put in a, it's a Hilux. Okay, what what model Hilux is it? Like, is it a? Well, hang on, is it a red one or a freaking yellow one? I don't know. Well, there's no yellow one, so it can't be yellow one, but. You know, they skip over the fighter details and I always remind them, you know, just please be very careful about the information you put in. Like, don't just skip over it because, you know, we want to give you a heads up before we call you. If we call you and just say, okay, well, what's it doing? Is it blowing smoke? Has it got any fault codes? Has it got fuel? We could waste them 10 minutes just trying to find out what the problem is. Where, where if they log in all the details... And that was good about like one that I gave to you, Jeff. That was a classic example, a lot of detail. That's the kind of detail we like. And then I take that away and then I'll study that. Or our backup text. We've got two backup texts, which is Daniel, uh, Daniel Armour, who people might be aware of Daniel Armour's 
Um, also one of the TAT team guys for, um, for the TAT. So he works in the background with their TAT assist. We do, anyone out there watching and are a TAT member, no, Daniel will not help you with diesel stuff. Okay, that's, <laughs> that is an agreement that we have with Dan straight up and it's great because this what I love about is that he's such an honourable, such a genuine person, Dan, and, you know, if he does help you out with your technical issues and that petrol stuff, he's not, he's definitely one person that doesn't have an ego and um, he's very good at what he does and very good at his scope and everything like that. So he's one of our backup techs. And I met Dan from attending several of our training courses a couple of years back in WA and then we got Ron, uh, Ron McLeod, who's a uh, more, more senior gentleman. Be careful what I say here. He's, he's not too old. He's probably about he's 10 years older Wales, than me. Isn't he? Ron McLeod? Yeah, Ron McLeod is yeah. in New South Wales. Have you met him? Have you, Jeff? I haven't. No, he's, he's on my radar to go and see. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, I'd, I'd love to, I'd on, love to I'll meet just, him. I'll just text him now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't don't answer that. Oh, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Block this number from now. Block, oh, <laughs> block this number now. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've had a, a few messages him over over the years, and um, he seems a really nice guy. And uh, oh, I think, yeah, uh, I, I think he, um, I, I think he's just had a bit of a suffering in the floods as well. Uh, oh, he's so, copped it three times yeah. in the floods. He's like yeah. at a. I said, mate, if you want a water view, you know, like <laughs> just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, hope he wasn't charging his Tesla in the garage, eh? <laughs> oh. um. Yeah, he's copped a few, but yeah, Ron's been with us, I think, nearly two years now. And yeah. um, both those guys are really good on the scope. And that's kind of a point of, again, like those guys are really good. Their expertise is in the light vehicle market and scopes and electronics and all that. And that is something I will never claim. I have never. But this is this be... is one of the things that threw me off in the. Um, so uh, Costa um, uh, Clinton sent me a test, and it, there was heaps of information that this guy had tested. You know, he changed mass for uh, math sensors for known <clears throat> goods. We've got all the fault codes. We've got the color of the smoke, and one of the tests that he'd done was a relative compression test. And I'm looking at the information, and it seemed inconclusive. And I'm like. Why, why is it inconclusive? Either it is or it isn't. Or, you know, maybe he's, maybe he's got a broken amp clamp or something like that. But So that, that threw me off as well. And, uh, you know, th th this is what made me, like, completely re-guess myself and have a sleepless night. But um, I, so those guys, they need some scope training so they can, um, so they can yes or no what they're seeing on the screen. That's that's true too. Yeah. So that yeah, well, that's something that um, well, it's actually yeah. I don't know. They um, well, I know their boss, like um, the boss of that company. He's he's quite good on the scope, but it's probably um, I think the guy actually I believe the guy we're doing the diagnostics with fairly new there. They just tell me yeah. today he's uh, ex dealership um, Mazda. <laughs> we'll talk about the CX wise. So he said anything you need to know, clean about CX wise. <laughs> Well, they've got no enough now. Yeah, all I need to know <laughs> is you don't buy them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've had enough cases to deal with to know pretty much all about them. But, um, you know, it's one of the things that I don't um, – there's quite a lot of cars out there and trucks as well because, you know, we do a lot of heavy. Like, you know, we just did a Western Star the other week. Now, hey, my relationship with this Western Star, mate, all I know is they're a butter company. That's about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. The old man always calls him, called him the butter truck. But, um, and this is the um, interesting thing is that, and, and tell you what, you know, being, being brought up by the old man, diesel mechanic, who was uh, Vol originally a Volvo dealer, then went on to be Scania. So you can see what he favoured was the European, the Swedish, um, Swedish trucks, that is, not just the Swedish girls. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, can you elaborate? Yeah. <laughs> and no, he didn't drive a Saab either. <laughs> I tell you what, I always say, if my old man was around today, I know what car my old man would drive, and I think I'd disown him. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that my dad would be getting around in a Ford Ranger. <laughs> so oh, no. he, he was a Ford man. I tell you what, he would have been asked. He would have been asking me, "Can I want to buy one of these Ford Rangers?" I went, "No, don't buy one, Dad. Don't. <laughs> what if you do? Don't." And guess what? He would have bought one, 
And then he would have been on the phone every week. Oh, this freaking light's on now. What have I got here? I'll be like, Dad, I told you not to buy a fucking Ranger. <laughs> told you to buy a Sangyong. <laughs> Sangyong. Exactly. Yeah, buy a Sangyong. <laughs> buy a Sangyong. <laughs> well, look, obviously you should buy an Amarok. Obviously? Yeah. Why, if, if you If you want a U, you know, a, a four-wheel drivey U thing, you'd buy an Amarok. Do you own an Amarok? Well, no, it's, but it's a Volkswagen. It's it's a quality vehicle. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hang on. Careful I, what you say. I, I'm going to be careful what I say to you because, um, you know what? I was actually, it was my dream car. And uh, even before I worked at the VW dealership because I actually used to own a GT Golf diesel. And that by far was the best diesel. So, so that was a PD, a PD diesel. That was a PD yes. system. Yeah, oh, that was an 07 that PD. Was brilliant bloody weapon that of a were car. Good. That was good. Very fast car. Yeah. And um, you know, I always wanted an Amarok since having one of them. And then the Amarok came out, and you know, when you become a service deal, service manager for a dealership, when their very first new cars ever released you realise you really don't want to own one. <laughs> so, mate, when that car first came out in Australia, in, around the world, they built their first Amarox over in South America. Within three months, they pulled the whole factory down and sent it to Germany Well, wow. because those guys didn't know how to put paint on cars. All the re- <sighs> We did all back-to-back warranties, like every, we had five in, probably five Amarox a day, the first lot that went out all had to be re- re-sprayed. They had runs on them. They had, oh, it was disgusting, mate. It was really sad because they'd had an issue before with paint jobs on their bloody Volkswagen Crafter with rust issues on the Crafter, you know. They had issues, and these are known problems, so I know I'm not going to get sued by a Volkswagen for telling her their Well, look, this, happened, this happened in the 80s as well, that every red car, mm. every red, like, old uh, Volkswagen Polo, uh, Golf Jetta, some Audis as well. They had to respray a lot, a lot of those. And this isn't like the late eighties. Oh wow! So it was a well, great. I think I think back in the day, Audi were one of the first to have a, a ten-year anti-perforation warranty on the body. Wow, one. that's nuts. But, um, but this is when Volkswagen Audi were, were good. Yeah, look, I, I always. <laughs> okay, the see problem is, well. well, the thing is, right? They're actually, you know, they're. I think they're out there, like, when I look at the, like, I look at our technical bulletins, right? So, you know, one of the things, you know, part of the diesel help is the technical bulletins. And um, today, actually, quite ironically, today, uh, this afternoon, late this afternoon, I'm punch, punching out another two, te- you just, did you turn the switch off again, did you, mate? Unplug him. <laughs> That's the time he's fully charged. <laughs> so, we um mate, oh, he's got a pro- he's got something wrong there mate there's a bit noisy bearing there mate <laughs> now what it is because we're doing right after work normally the 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 game plan is we get home from work we have a bit of a wrestle you know oh. he has he has his toys he's just walking around with his toy barking Oh, I've ruined you. <laughs> Come Daddy, Daddy. I've Come ruined Daddy more. doggy time nah, he's, all right. bad, he's all right he's all right don't feel bad he's fine um well, I was saying, yeah, the, um, you know, we do, like, so, yeah, this afternoon I actually was, I did flick onto the Garage Network, um, well, it just seems to appear on my Facebook uh, quite a lot now, probably because I've commented on a few things, so I'm just asking for trouble there. But uh, there was a, um, uh, a, a post by um, somebody about a Mitsubishi with a, quite a common problem, the DPF um, over full uh, reset coming on all the time and we actually just had a new member join up this afternoon not the same guy of course um but a new member joined up and i was chatting him the sarvo and it and i was like oh i've been meaning to do this bloody bulletin for that particular problem for ages you know so i actually whapped through but i didn't comment on the post because i don't want to i cannot let too much out for nothing as you be no, aware it's, it's, and, it's oh, how you it's how you make your living and, and uh no, exactly and I, I you know that, yeah. the bulletins you know the members you know we and the update today we've um we've got 223 members australia and new zealand um and they're all trade you know trade only that we're aware of and they're heavy and light vehicle mechanics and um yeah you know there's um you know, there's a heap of bulletins in there and 
Well, I was saying before, you know, there's a lot of bulletins for Ford Ranger and a lot of people go, oh, you bagged the Ford Ranger. I said, well, I'm not bagging. I'm just stating the obvious that there's a freaking lot of problems with that car, okay? So, and it's nothing to do with the quantities out there because the problems we see are so, such a young age of a car, you know, with problems in that. I said, but I do know there are some good ones out there. You know, in every car out there on the road, there is some good, long-lasting, reliable cars. And it all comes down to um, not just the owner, but how they're looked after by their mechanic. You know, it comes down to a very crucial point here, like um, how it's serviced. And one of the things that, you know, we talk about in servicing for diesels, it's not just a matter of ripping out the oil and, chucking a filter on it and topping up the washer bottle and a couple of wiper blades and all that, like there is much more to it. And I think now you probably agree, you'll find that even your GDI cars are finding there's increased maintenance areas. Like, you know, there's like one of the stupid bloody things that I see that doesn't get replaced on diesels is vacuum tubes. And the most common, one of the biggest failures on diesels is vacuum switches. Um, Massive problem with them. And the guys go, oh, I can't believe this thing's only like seven years old and it's got, you know, 100,000 Ks on it. I think, well, how long do you expect the rubber to last for? If you're replacing belts at every, every, you know, replacing belts every 100,000 Ks, well, think about, you know, other things like that. So a lot of things get overlooked. And that's where I think, you know, some of these cars are probably not getting the miles. The other problem with the, you know, as we know, the diesels, a lot of them people are just, become obsessed with in australia we are obsessed with diesels you've got to admit Absolutely. and city cars you know the amount of um people you know i remember i recall going i went to um i went to a very world-renowned trade show called auto mechanica in germany by far the best. You ever been to that one, Jeff? Because you wouldn't have been far from... No, no but uh, me, me and Costa, um, we may actually be going to one. But this that's year? A, that's a, but that's a secret. No, well, no, maybe not this year, but we're, we have plans with these things. I, yeah. I have the same kind of plans. I would I would definitely like to get back to the Germany one and actually stand it. And... We could all go to a, a good mud wrestling uh, show as well, couldn't we? I had to work early, mate. I don't know you're on about <laughs> I was just thinking of Oktoberfest, actually, to be honest. No. <laughs> Oktoberfest follows on after uh, Auto Mechanica. And that's very important that we go to both just to make yes, sure that. indeed, that, indeed, that, indeed. You know, the all yeah. events are covered and, you know, that we've, you know. We can relay it all back to the Garage Network. We've got to absorb as much of the technical side of that as possible. <laughs> exactly. And that, that was very beneficial back then. But one of the things that I was over there, which one, um, Oktoberfest or Mechanica? This is Auto Mechanica. <laughs> okay, and yeah, just this don't. was this was in two thousand and six. So this was when I was still um, before diesel help days, and uh, I went there because we back in my diesel shop, we were not just doing diesel fuel injection repairs and overhauls. We were also the sole, the biggest. I say, yeah, we were the biggest wholesaler for injector washers seat washers, return washers for before common rail. So I went over there to find out what do we need to get all the ancillary parts for common rail diesel. So we got onto a lot of stuff for like return clips and all that stuff you see on common rail. And that's why, you know, we do a lot of the quick release fittings these days because always chasing that. But one of the things I was getting at is that, you know, in Europe, there was no focus whatsoever on getting four wheel drives in the city. It was all about small cars. And i just blown away by when you look in Australia and you drive in the cities like Melbourne and Sydney and Brisbane, all the big all the big cities, just the amount of four-wheel drive use. I'm thinking there's already enough cars on the road as it is and there's no car parks and you guys are going buying bigger and bigger cars. Like, are you not working it down? <laughs> yeah, hey, look, you've got to sometimes explain to the customers that you've bought the wrong car. The problem exactly. is you've bought the wrong car. Yeah, yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't suit, it does not suit city driving. And so that's something somehow, you know, uh, we, well, if we teach them too much, then they'll, they won't break and we'll have no work. So. Look, when we're, when we're lucky, we get customers that actually ask us, you know, what should we buy? The very first question we have is, well, A, what size do you need? And number two, what type of driving do you do? 
you yeah. know, because if they're, they're always going to be trying to solve the more expensive one, it's just what it is. Um, that's what a dealership is meant to be doing anyway. It's sort of their job. Um, yeah. And the aim is normally a diesel. That's what ends up happening. But um, I think a bit of customer education on that sense makes our life a lot easier. Yeah, totally. Less money, but 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 more. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I did see a report today. You know, interesting. Saw a report today that you know this is two years away. Fifteen years. You think about fifteen years. Where are you going to be in fifteen years? You know, fifteen years. Well, if I'm if I'm smart, I could live till sixty five. And um, but the, but Canberra announced that in fifteen years they're going to ban petrol cars. Now that was interesting. It just stated petrol cars, not diesel cars. Good point. So that was interesting. So they're going to ban. They want to ban in Canberra. I thought, well, whoop de do. Yeah. Canberra's my new. Uh, but I find that interesting because Canberra is like. You're sort of in the middle of a couple of hours from anywhere else big. Yeah. yeah. So if you leave Canberra, what do you do? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I, I you, have a, you have a nice, di- you have a nice diesel at home on. The oh, for the yeah, weekends, so, yeah. yeah. For the weekends. But I, I actually saw that. All I could think of that's great if you're staying within Canberra because Canberra's not that big, right? Compared no. To but what if you're driving? A, is that you're, what happened? You you're get in the, the middle of park it up. <laughs> yeah, to go to the next big town, you've got a bit of a drive. You see, this what is this is one of a ridiculous thing which is made by politicians, which probably don't have they, they probably don't even own a car, yeah. and um, you know maybe we need, yeah, need to have a rethink. They get driven. Yeah, I mean <laughs> cer- certainly driven. Yeah. Cer- certainly to to ban a petrol car, I, I, I think is I don't think it's the right thing because we've got a lot of hybrids as well, and you know but. They're not pumping out the emissions that mm. the diesels are, and um, uh, I just, it just I'd love make to sense. see. I'd love to see the infrastructure plan for all these cars that need to be charged in yeah. in somewhere like Canberra. I would love to see what the actual planning looks like. I think that'd be super interesting because I don't. I'll be surprised if they can pull enough energy out to even charge these cars. Well, we'll, we'll have to get a Tesla power wall, like, won't we? Well, a couple of weeks ago, we got a be... thing, make sure you don't use too much power because we're running low. Like, well, we don't even have electric cars yet. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's definitely going to be a lot of uh, hiccups along the way. And I don't, it definitely, yeah, Australia's not set up. Australia's not set up for it. Um, you know, we're not even set up to run, um, you know, full solar systems in Australia and everything like that. Well, I, just... I couldn't even get a train to you. I'd have to change three or four times with different track gauges. <laughs> and, track gauges, you know. change. Exactly. I, I, it's I really okay, Jeff. It... You'll be able to fly there. You'll be able to. You'll be able to jump. No, I'll just way. drive them a transit. Um, <laughs> um, if 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 the government wants to do something about the emissions, let's let's do emissions testing on on registration inspections. That let's make let's make it let's make a start there. Let's uh, let's walk before we can run. But I, I could rant on about this for quite a while. Um, yeah, but that's you know, something that you guys. Out. That's what you know. In the UK. I remember back. You know, we used to deal with the UK quite a lot because we were OEM dealers. So we're always talking to them over the UK a lot. And you know, it was great. That you guys did emission testing in the UK. I think that. Um, Changed a lot of people's buying decisions, and they all went to diesel because the diesels were becoming less emissions. And then I suppose now flipped around the other way. And but um, look, the the end of the day is that you know, as I'm saying, the people like you know, this is again another sales thing for my for the training. You know, like um, when I'm talking to the guys, you know, I tell them about my experience, and I said, look. Um, diesel's around for a long time like this is at the training courses you know i say guys look i'm not at all worried about the media the media is just bullshit it is absolute freaking bullshit they ramble on it they don't care it doesn't matter it's good or bad they're making money okay it doesn't matter and they will push 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 and bang on about evs and bang on evs and it's really just media hype there are so many parts of Australia that will not be able to handle electric vehicles, particularly rural, like regional Australia. Like there's just, you know, there's not going to... We're, we're very vast. The vast land out there with not much in between, yeah. No, yeah. and, the you know, they're going on about, oh, no, they're great, you know, we're going to have charge stations here and there, but 
Mate, don't worry about bloody putting money in charge stations. Fix up your fucking roads, like the roads. <laughs> Start you know, there. The, one of the biggest causes of damage of electric motors, and I learned this, and by the way, you'll love this, guys. They're, they're banging on recently about the, you know, well, we're, we're talking about the new laws, the legislation, right to repair and all that. Now, there's a big thing that was brought up with the uh, current um, workshop data suppliers, one of them being Haynes that we're a reseller for. Haynes had to go in there and pull the pin, had to pull out all the EV data out of Haynes Pro because they cannot in- ensure that the mechanic purchasing that or the person purchasing Haynes is authorised and has the yeah, wow. so it has the certification or the... Qualification, or whatever. Or the qualification, or the um, you know, to work on EV vehicles. And I said, well, I tell you what, there wouldn't many many diesel mechanics out there that have the certification. I've actually done the certification through Bosch. I had the certificate um, on hybrid and and electric. It wasn't EVs, but it's hybrid hybrid and electric vehicle systems. Now, I went along to that training course for myself back in eighteen. And um, to find out more about electric systems, because that's what we deal with in Common Rail Diesel. We deal with electronic actuators. I want to know why electric, uh, a lot of electric motors shit themselves so much. Well, one of the causes of electric motor failures is heat, vibration, and dust. So they're banging on about bloody getting the the charge stations in, but that's going to be the least of their problems. Is is the vehicles are not going to be able to. You're not going to be able to deal with the roads that we have in Australia, you know, especially Queensland. Every six months, our roads get wiped out from floods. <laughs> well, the last few weeks, we've had like well, a, you've had a, a crazy say, amount it's, of. It's not great on the roads at the oh, moment. I'll tell you what, we've got whole, uh, bad ones. Yeah, Didn't I can imagine really you ones. guys have had some shit for rain. I've never seen our roads like this for a. I can't even remember. Yeah, so you. Yeah, so just, there's always just that just going just going back to what you're saying there with uh, you know the change in in how that that data uh, manufacturer or data sources is, is changing mm-hmm. information. Um, it's not just those. Um, I've I've heard um, a manufacturers had to change how they give out security information. Yeah, and you now have to do, be, <clears throat> be a member of ASRA, and 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 I'm going to sort of put my hand up and say, look, bear, bear with it. You know, there, there has been a drastic change. Two weeks ago, you could access information, this information, and now you can't. It's just, it's just teething problems. Um, I've heard people say, "Oh, this has caused more problems than what you, you know, than what it's worth." It, it, it will, it will come good. We will get, you know, yeah. Azra, Azra is run by the AAA at the moment, which is a, a small group of people doing it on, mm. on a sort of voluntary basis, and. It, that that will come better. So people that are, are scared about data and, and information, it it it's gonna it's gonna come. It will come good. It will just take time. But don't quote me on that and don't sue me because everyone else is <laughs> everyone else is suing me. Just, up. just 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 bear, just bear with them. I, I've I've read, I've read it. You know, I'm on, I'm on a couple of Facebook groups and I've seen some negative comments. And come on, they, these guys have next to no time to to sort of change change the world and even the manufacturers aren't geared up for this yet so don't don't yeah, blame it's, it's new don't it's, blame double a double a or or azra oh look man it's like i can see that too because you know we've and one thing you know i completely support you know at first i was i was really annoyed about the haynes thing but then i found out oh, i was only ev it doesn't doesn't really affect us and when you look at the content they took out of haynes it's not a lot there, there was not a lot. Well, the um, EV, what's the EV car park now? 0. 0.0 something percent. So, I mean, it's yeah, you know, they thing. did rip out like the Lexus information and all that. And, okay. With the hybrid stuff. Yeah. The hybrid Lexus yeah, right. information, the Toyota hybrid information, you know, but okay. one of the strong points that I made, and I actually did take this up with Stuart Charity, and I sent him an email, and my wife said, Oh, you shouldn't be emailing Stuart directly. He hasn't got time for you. I said, Yes, he has. He's always got time for me. <laughs> so <laughs> everyone's got time for me. No. <laughs> he actually has. We I go quite well, I go very well with Stuart. Do you, do you know him. who I am? 
I love, as you know, that's my favourite line. They, and actually, it's my favourite line, but also I then find myself apologising. I don't want to sound like a wanker, but <laughs> yeah. you know who I am. <laughs> Have you heard of me? Yeah. <laughs> I write for Women's Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, I said, but Eva, I said, this is my biggest, my, the only thing I'm annoyed with about, you know, we're a reseller for Haynes, but... It's not going to, hopefully not going to affect us too much. You know, we, we make a little bit of profit on it. It's not a big deal for us, but it's just great because. Well, you, you, actually, you actually make profit, Clinton. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I feel offended. <laughs> I've got to learn how not, to do that. Not, yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> probably not as much profit as some of the other data resellers make. But um, no, we, we sell it at the recommended price. But. Um, my point was saying that, okay, so they want to pull the, they're not allowed to have access to information that's dangerous, such as EV, because they're not qualified. I said, well, if you want to get really nitty gritty about it, majority of mechanics out there are not qualified to work on diesels, you know, realistically. It's known as unsafe. If you look up the OEM, you lift the bonnet on some cars, it actually has stickers on there, High voltage. Yeah, don't touch. Not only that, not just diesel, but 48 volt systems yeah. can can zap you big time, you know. So, oh, yeah. You know, but. Um, see, I'm, but, yeah, see was, I'm, so I'm scared about I'm not worried about volts. Yeah. It's, but look, <laughs> the, there's, I can tell you now, the, the only thing, the only um, loophole I've seen in, and it's going to happen, it's, I can guarantee you there will be businesses that will register on ASRA that are not qualified. Mm-hmm. And and that's the thing. Uh, so I'm not sure how they're doing the checking, but in Australia we don't have, you know, New South Wales is the only state that we have to be a, um, a licensed mechanic. I think it's us and WA, I think, as well. I'm not yeah. sure about WA. I but the rest of the country, but even in New South Wales, I know, I know. of a workshop, and I won't name them because I'd be a falling out with them. They were doing, they were doing really bad stuff, really naughty stuff. Mm. <laughs> naughty i sound like a kid yeah. and um <laughs> so they're, you know they're deleting dps which is something i do not condone and i don't care anyone want to argue me with me whatever it's just you don't do it like it's no point to doing it the only point is it makes you good money quick 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 money and but so does selling drugs selling drugs makes <laughs> you quick money too you know and it's, it's illegal, funny. The, the, so. the, the little things you generally make money quick yeah yeah exactly but yeah. anyway, and I found out that you know a couple of years ago that this guy wasn't even a qualified mechanic. Yeah, well. Um, his dad set up, and his dad's not even a qualified mechanic. His dad set up a business under his name, and no one's qualified in the business. And this guy's working on cars and wow. doing this kind of action. He's not the only one. So you know, where do you draw the line when somebody's qualified or not? Um, but at the end of the day, what it comes down to, you know, we, you know, it's like. Our training, you know, my diesel help training won't give them a qualification, but will give them that understanding and give them that competency. That's the word I was looking for before. Yeah. You're not competent to work on EV, but if you do this simple course, which is a simple course at Bosch, all you do is sit there and it's a competency course. You know, if my that's why I do my training. I know that. You know, years ago, before I started diesel help, when I had the diesel shop. We didn't want to give out information and no, did not anyone else did. The diesel fuel injection group, which has comes under the Australian Australasian Diesel Services Specialist, right? Double ADS, a very a big association back in the day, but now it's become a very small association because less and less diesel fuel injection specialists are required because everyone working on diesels is now considered uh, as you know a diesel mechanic in some respect. And um, but the whole big, you know, this closed association was it was oh god. If you were looked upon giving away information and sharing it to the outside non-diesel guys, you would look like oh no, you're that's it, you're out of it, banished. I don't like you anymore, banished. Yeah, and actually, yeah. that was that's what happened to me when I yeah, when yeah. the word got out. I recall work walking into a Brisbane diesel fuel injection specialist to say good day, and I won't name him, but <laughs> he's, he's sold, I think he's sold up now. Walked in, said, hey, hey, Mike, how you going? And he goes, get the fuck out of my workshop right now. Wow. 
I was like, what? Mate, you know, we were good mates. And he's like, I heard you're out there teaching the mechanics how to fix common rail diesel. He said, no, mate. He said, I don't want to know you. I said, hang on a second. Three weeks ago, you were ringing me to find out problems how to fix a common rail diesel. So it's okay for you, but it's not okay for the general mechanic. I said, this is the problem in our industry is we want to separate ourselves. It's about us and them. And mm. the thing about dealerships and independence, there shouldn't be us and them. I agree. We've got to work together. And I, I we agree. have a lot of dealerships we're involved with. We have dealerships on our net in our diesel help. And I'm sure you guys, I know you guys have got on Garage Network, Absolutely. you've got dealership mechanics. We all look, we this is one of the things that we try to tackle early on is that. We're all, we are actually, and as cliche as it sounds, we're actually in it together. We're right? trying to get, we're trying yeah, to. Yeah, there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be an us and them. Yeah, we all have the yeah. same sort of goals in the end. And it's not just even tech to tech, it's also tech to trainers or whatever. We're all in this for the same mm. cause, right? We're all here to fix cars, make some money, earn a living, you know, and, and also have an okay time while doing it, you know, having a bit of support and help along the way. That's what we sort of all started about now. I feel very comfortable that moving forward, I can definitely see that that culture of hiding the secrets is slowly going away. Yeah. Um, I feel like right now people are a lot more open to help and asking for help as well, whereas before, no, you had to work it out yourself and, you know, don't tell the guy down the road. Um, I'm sure that that's 100% going away because I can see that even just from not only on the network, you see it stronger the network because it's literally people helping each other. But mm. I even see it locally. You know, shops down the road had, I think when Jeff was over, no, Jeff missed him actually. So I had one of the guys on the network that was up the road and had to rewrite something on a, on a BMW. And I called him if he had ever done one. Within five minutes, he came down with his tool. Yeah, this will do it. You know? Yeah. And I literally just called him to say, hey, have you come across this before? You know? Up the road, he would technically be my competition, you know? Yeah. But, when, but when I'm busy... I'm sending him, I'm like, I can't get to it this week. Try this guy. <laughs> you know? yeah, and, and vice that's versa. Exactly. That's, you know? there's, enough, there's enough work. Enough cars. But, yeah. Enough cars. But the days, the days of, uh, you know, people thinking that uh, other shops are going to poach, we, we, we probably want to help you, but we don't want the customer. We don't want another customer or a broken car in the workshop, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But people will help, help each other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, you know. I mean, we're in a little bit of a different situation, of course. And you know, I'm, I'm like I've offered you guys, you know, I'm, I'm happy we'll do a, you know, we we'll look at a, doing a training session and that. And yeah. I could look at do it. I'd be happy to do a couple, you know. And the end of the day, and you know, the Diesel Hub membership is what um, is pretty much what pays my wage. You know, yeah. that's that's one thing that we've got to draw the line. There's some places where I, absolutely. You don't know yeah. when, when I say all that, I'm saying, you know. We're all in here to make do, a bit of money do, as well. Do, do that, that's what? what it is. I said that in there. Like, yes, exactly. We're going to make like, money. We've all so. got to make a living. We've all got to make a living. Like, And we've discussed the network as well. Even information, you don't go, st- I don't find it right stealing information. And, you know, you know, example, Hands Pro, I think that every shop should have at least a Hands Pro and a, a something or some sort of subscription. We do need to what pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> brand. Right? something. We do, yeah. need to, we do need to pay for these things. We need to, right? Just how we need to pay for training. Mm. We need to yeah. pay for these things because in the end, it makes our own businesses money. Like me mm-hmm. flying to Melbourne to come to your training, I recouped my money in the first week, the first time I, I implemented anything from that training. No, the, first time, you, the first time I connected my eliminator i can't even tell you what car it was it was a tug eliminator <laughs> yeah i'll tell you exactly what car it was because i remember very clearly thinking that was wow. awesome it was a 1kd hilux gauge was showing quarter full i'm like hmm you might be the gauge faulty but i wasn't sure couldn't smell diesel i connected it it worked done i'm like yeah cool it's not getting fuel that yeah and it's so, I charged, so so simple charge my hours for the time Went, put fuel in it, asked him, do you want to pull your gauge out? Sold the job as well. Yeah. Made, that would have taken me far longer if I wasn't prepared with any, yeah. A, knowledge, and two, the right equipment to fix it with. Yeah. You know, so trainings are an investment. Data are an investment. I, should, I don't think people should look at that as a, a cost for, per se. It's something no, that it's an investment. That's what I say. Like, you know, we new member joined up today. And actually, it's great. We're getting... 
we seem to be in one at the moment we're getting you know a couple of members joining up a week and it's interesting i always i ring up all our members personally and you know welcome to the membership and i want to find out how they found out about it's actually amazing a lot of members are finding out from when they google a fault code or a particular vehicle it takes them to our website that's that's thanks to my wife Jody, runs the IT department. It's bloody awesome. And she also works, so we've got an IT company that we work closely with, you know. That is, by the way, an investment. You know, yep. I said to people that is without that IT company um, or without membership, we wouldn't be able to pay for that kind of um, right. you know, it's like we we spent about, you know, we spent a few grand a couple of months back. We actually, in fact, got a grant. We applied for a government grant just to spend a heap of money on our website. So when people order a part or our, our equipment, the freight is per wherever it's sent to. It's not like we used to include a, uh, a cap freight amount in the part in the um, equipment. Yeah. Now we've taken that out. That brought the equipment down. So then it's then charged freight. So Sydney, you know, it's fifteen bucks. Perth might be twenty five bucks or something like yeah. that. You know, but we invested that. That's where we look at, oh, yeah, that's going to cost us a bit of money to do it, but we look at long-term effect. It's going to help us sell more equipment. It's going to help our members and that. So you've always got to look at, you know, that investment and everything like that. So, you know, without – and it's great because today, you know, I got feedback today. One of our members in Tassie referred somebody in Brisbane to join up, yeah. and it's just great. And it's so rewarding to hear that. And I can tell you now, I always say, I don't know everything, but we're there as your sounding board. We're there to steer you in the right direction before you go in the completely wrong direction. That's not going to be an investment whatsoever. It will cost you not only the job, but it will cost you at least five customers. When you start misdiagnosing jobs, don't just think about it. And that's the way you got to think about it. you got to think, what is it going to cost me when I stuff this up? Yeah. You know? Not just the one job, but that person will speak to two or three people and social media is, is, is bad. It's and, the, and the other thing is we, we want to fix shit. Petrol, diesel, yeah. hydrogen, EV, don't care, push bike. We, hybrid we diesel, want, mate, hybrid diesel coming out we, next year, by the way. We, we want to fix it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So. Yes. Uh, if if we've got a small investment, uh, you, you know, I don't know how much. I'm not sure how much the membership is to these. Well, hang thing. on a second. It's it's, it's probably you're just so lucky you asked. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be his background. <laughs> hang on, I just shut my video up again. Uh, I, I have a the, slide. Well, I, don't, I don't know. Is it, is it one job? It, hang it, on is a it, second. Is I it, can is share it a, a screen. If if we if we can fix one job, but we had a, had a head scratch about you, maybe you've got a a TSB a, a TSB yeah. about it's potentially no brainer, isn't it? And also one less dead car in a very yeah. busy workshop. Oh, I can't share a screen. That's oh, terrible. Well, Costa, <laughs> you, 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 you blocked him. You've blocked I blocked it. I blocked it. Blocked it. it I'm, I'm pretty sure it's got something to do with Elon. What you yeah, yeah, Elon Tesla. Tesla yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a traded. Yeah. But, um, yeah, look, it's, jeez, uh, man, jeez, oh, look at it, jeez, mate, we, how are we going for time, yeah? Yeah, look, we'll start wrapping up shortly whenever we're, yeah. we, get, we always get carried away. Do you away. want to ask me any other, well, yeah, far away, any more questions? Well, yeah, well, I mean, about, about, this, about this jelly wrestling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that can be for after the recording, mate. Well, I was just thinking about yeah. that, you know, I've got my 50th <laughs> celebrations coming up in January, it's beautiful hot weather. Supposedly um, raspberry flavour is the best, I've heard, ooh. the rumour. Don't know why, rumour. Actually, I was just saying, yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of jelly. Yeah, I like, <laughs> I like jelly. <laughs> well, you're more of a fan now, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, my favourite is jelly, jelly shots. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the yeah. worst thing about jelly shots, though, I tell you the worst thing about jelly shots. Ever oh. had, have you had jelly shots? Of course. I mean, no. <laughs> no, no, come on, no, because we, we, because because I, I I'm I'm 40 years of old. I don't yeah. need this silly stuff. <laughs> well, I remember Mr. jelly shot. The worst thing about jelly shots is that everyone seems to make jelly shots. They put them in plastic. Those plastic um, mini like the plastic throwaway jelly cups. Yeah, 
Now, usually when you get a jelly shot, it doesn't always, just doesn't fall out and you end up sticking your tongue in there. <laughs> the worst thing about, now this is a jelly I've got shot. a visual. Oh. I, yeah, a visual. <laughs> well, when you're a single bloke and you've got a tongue like that, the girls tend to, yeah, hang on, I've got to meet you. Okay, so that jelly <laughs> shot goes a different place, totally different place. But the worst thing about those plastic cups, you stick your tongue in there, you're guaranteed to cut the base of your tongue. That's the worst thing, just pre-warning you. Jelly shots, don't lick the shit out of the plastic cups. You'll cut your tongue on the edge of the plastic. Pro- Clinton's pro tips. We're going to actually yeah, have that as yeah, a banner. Yeah. Scuba <laughs> DPS yeah. and uh, fuel veil, uh, suction control valves and airflow and EGR jelly shots. Like do not lick, lick, yeah, 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 do not lick the tub. Yeah, it's jelly yeah. help Australia. Uh, well, I will, look, I will touch on something. I think you were saying earlier we're probably going to look at running some sort of um, – Clinton Brits, Diesel Hop, Australia, some sort of training through the garage at work. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, you know, hot topic right now, and we uh, and it's winter. It's our winter. It's our winter fault. I find it as EGR related problems. So I, awesome. you know, and I've seen some of the posts. I've had to refrain back from the garage network because I could just get on a massive tangent about it, and then it would just be misunderstand. Well, it's really it's misunderstanding. Yeah. Yeah, as I said, it's just if there's too much information on there typed up. Typing's hard. Typing's, typing's hard. hard. I yeah. feel like I'm getting, I shouldn't, yeah, I'm getting some kind of bloody RSI or MS in my bloody, or what's that? Um, is it RSI in your wrist? Yeah, yeah, like, RSI. Carpal tunnel. Uh, um, uh, Carpal I think, tunnel. I think, yeah. I think Costa calls it wanker's cramp. <laughs> yeah. And that's in my foot. I just I had to stop there for a second before I go too far here to talk about problems with my wrist. <laughs> yeah, I saw you navigating that very Yeah, very exactly. I'm going to just well. go carefully then, because I know, Jeff came I know out the way it. Jeff's thinking. I know this way he's thinking. You were so diplomatic. End of transmission. End of transmission. Yeah. 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 You were so politically correct, so nice, you know, yes. and Jeff, wankers cramp. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank so, you. um... <laughs> But yeah, I find uh, but I'm going to go back and try and get change the subject again. Back to ETRs. <laughs> <Yeah, please. laughs> back to carbon <laughs> porn. <laughs> from from one porn to the other. Talking about That's carbon right. porn. It's going to carbon so, now. Yes, correct. Yeah, carbon oh. porn. So yeah, it's a quite a strong topic in winter. Like the amount of diesel job logins, and that's you know that's how we roll. The guys are logging a job, and it's just been bang bang for weeks now. For, for a lot, yeah. quite a long time, um, we're getting a lot of um, carbon buildup and that, and therefore it's causing EGR problems. There's also more members we've got, so we've got to take those, you know, into account and the and all that. But it's just, I find it's one part of the diesel that is very misunderstood. It's just seen as a an emission system. Yeah, there's more to it than just emissions, and there's more to it than just being an exhaust gas. Even the wording of it, the manufacturers of stuff, well, I don't know. The, the, man, the manufacturers could have worded it much better, you know. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's a different, it's it's another intake system. And so that's where I find it very easy to misunderstand it. So I, I believe that I can push out a, um, a webinar for how long did we say? An hour, an hour and a half. I can't what, remember. What, whatever you would like to do. Sir. All right. I think it was going to be roughly about an hour and a half to include a bit of question time afterwards, yeah. you know, and just fire off a couple of, you know, any questions and Excellent. so forth. And, oh, yeah, fun. look, I'd definitely be interested if you guys, um, you know, it'd be great if we could line up. Yeah. And I remember you mentioning this, Jeff, a while back about your networking nights and, we were talking about the Dubbo thing originally. We didn't end up going ahead and doing Dubbo training in the end. We didn't get enough numbers for it. Um, I find at the moment training is really hard. It's like some places are booking out big time. We're getting strong bookings. Um, but some places they're just way too – everyone's too busy. And that's – You just want to hang out and have jello shots with me and Costa, uh, don't you? No, you're right. Clearly. I think a lot of shops right now are actually super busy. They are having a really hard time. I think it's a bit of everyone's playing a lot of catch up. Yeah. Um, that's what I've noticed. A few guys I've spoken to that do want to go to different things are really playing catch up and mm. almost, I want to say, borderline overwhelmed where new things are not a thing. Oh, yeah. This is going. This is actually, yeah. I believe, this is where our industry just doesn't 
understand, they just don't get it. They they feel that they owe the world. I owe the customer. I'm going to yep. break my. I'm going to break yeah, my man. guts. I'm going to send my. You know, I learned years ago. Like, um, you know, one of the, when I had the diesel shop on the Gold Coast, one of the things back. This is before diesel help even came to mind. But my focus was I wanted to make a lot of money. I wanted to. I, I actually had a dream of being a millionaire. Um, and I'd be honest that I've wiped that for nearly 10 years. Hmm. I realized that, and we did, we actually achieved in three years of the, um, when I got involved in that diesel shop on the Gold Coast, we actually did make a million bucks, um, you know, in the first, oh, in the third year, right? In the, in the third year, it was just going gangbusters. But I looked at, I was knackered. Yeah. You know, AC was working. We were doing big work for Murray's bus lines and they were big customers like one bus, fuel system, fuel pump and injectors, like non-common rail, 18K. Yeah, well. That's it, 18K. That was nothing to do with the engine or anything like that and non-common rail at all. That was just pumping injectors. and But I was doing them on New Year's Day. I was doing them on Christmas Eve. I was doing them yeah. on Christmas Day. I was busting my balls to please the customer yeah. because they wanted their buses back on the road for Christmas holidays, blah, 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 you know, and all the other jobs. We would do bending over backwards, you know, and I'm seeing this happening still to the day. I'm thinking. Still happening. You know, like talking to you the other week, I love that, four-day weeks. You know, as long as you're not bloody look, working on Saturdays. That's no, the look, I made a conscious decision when we sold up that, that if going forward it had to change a little bit. Because I found myself, like you said, hours and like, yeah, just all you do is work. That is it. Yeah. Like, yeah, you great. Don't get make, to spend your money. Make all the money in the world. You know what? You're not enjoying any of it. Yeah. So, no. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But, um, yeah. So, you know, I was talking about that networking event, you know, if we, um, you know, and, and I looked at it the way you said it too, Jeff. I remember you saying, I said, oh, I'll get together something, you know, and I'll put on something for Diesel Company. And you said, oh, no, just just come along, you know, just as you. I was like, just, be, just, just be a bloke. Yeah, yeah. just be normal. Well, not, you know, yeah. Hang on, if you say, say, if you say just come along as you, well. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I was, saying, I, I was smirking. Ma- as you've seen some photos. You've seen uh, some photos, haven't ma- you? Ma- ma- <laughs> maybe we'll give you some parameters to work with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no parameters. There's some yeah. rules for Clinton. <laughs> yeah. No worry. I get a surprise. I get a. I get a surprise. The industry one day, and I think it's a few that probably already know. Well, well, um, well yeah. Ma- make sure you do that at Vasa or or something. <laughs> not to do with no, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. No, I might even. Nah, Vasa's too small. Vasa's too small. Uh, I, I might I might work up something for next year for the um, AAA in Brisbane in, in June. Uh, well, we'll, we, we will be there. We will be yeah. there. So um, I'll, I'll put uh, on we, a. We, we'll, we'll, we can all have. Uh, we can all have. Uh, exactly, uh, but um, yeah. Look, if you can organise something, um, if you end up doing we'll one in Melbourne, I can give you some dates if you can work around my schedule. <laughs> yeah, if you want to make your event around my schedule <laughs> you don't know who just, I am <laughs> just before it goes out of my brain if people hey. were wanting to join Diesel Help Australia there's a couple of different ways that they can do that isn't there what's that if, if people there's want a, to there's join a few, there's a few different levels of Diesel Help Australia oh I think it's, so we involved? just got the How one website involved? mate there's no jellies.com or anything yeah. like that <laughs> yet yet <laughs> unless there's enough Obviously, there is actually now. Enough. I will be <laughs> so I don't shut off my uh, video screen here. We'll go to a uh, background effects. So there are uh, several levels of Diesel Help Australia. Just <laughs> were very professional instantly. How good was that? <laughs> instantly went professional. Well, you know, I, I've um, the over man the can do times, it all. What's that? The man can do it all. <laughs> Well, I've done, done my fair share of Zoom meetings. I, I'm going to minute. Meets. I'm going to Let me change my background. Give me two minutes. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, don't. Don't. No. Oh, no. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so there's there's three levels of diesel help. And um, you got silver, gold, or platinum. And uh, uh, you, you won't get your uh, member's lounge with any of those at all. You won't get your... Uh, 
a frequent flight. Thank you, free beers and toasted <laughs> sandwiches, and uh, and lovely hostesses. I, I though I can, I can, you know, I can put on a wig and a dress if you want a lovely hostess. You know, if you pay, so. if you pay enough. <laughs> yeah, if you pay enough. <laughs> yeah. <sure. laughs> the, actually, I should have. I should. Um, hang on. No, you time. should. I'll look no, for a photo. Should. Hang no, on. you should. <laughs> you don't want me to. Let, let's oh. finish. Let's finish one once. All right, let's time. finish this. All right, yeah, so we'll go time. through this once and I'll show you a photo. So I'll leave you. I'll leave you with a thought. I'll leave you with an image. <laughs> no, please, and you'll please never don't. want to speak to me again. Please, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, 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 six months Jeff's ago, good, some, uh... somebody mentioned some like diesel help training. <laughs> yeah, no. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, three levels of diesel help. Hang on, Costa, we've lost you. Oh, no, he's going. He's disappeared. Sorry, he's, 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 he fell into your screen, on. mate, then. You fell turn, into the screen. Turn, turn the charger on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you got uh, silver, gold, or um, uh, platinum. And I've got, to, let's see, I've got to look to the right here because I've got my prices there. Um, so you, your silver membership gets you up to six jobs a year, so six diagnostic jobs. Um so all your, pretty much all your membership, you'll get access to all of the technical bulletins, which I've just produced 195 this afternoon, 195th uh, diesel dedicated bulletins only. Um, some of them are actual FAQ bulletins, so frequently asked questions like, um, you know, how do you remove and replace injectors, um, remove it and replace injectors, should you do a compression test, all that. Um, DPF, um, there's a common FAQ. You know, the bulletins cover, um, I think, for memory, over 200 different model vehicles. Okay, so most of them are light vehicle cars. There's a few trucks in there as well. And um, so they also get, every member gets 5% discount off any of our training courses, whether it's online or face-to-face. -face. Currently, we only run one face-to-face -face training course, which is the ultimate diagnostic common rail diesel diagnostic course, which both you guys have attended to. Um, that is still, is still the same course as been running nearly 10 years now, and it's still selling out, which is really good to see. We've refined it a few areas like that. Um, we've also they've got access to six online training courses, fully complimentary, which includes your DPF diagnostic webinar that was popular over the last two, three years. Also a big hit at Vision High Tech in America, where it was seen by a few hundred people and great, well recepted by the Yanks. I was really impressed with that because I always thought they knew everything. Um, unlike the POMs, they know even more. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, um, yeah, so they've got access to that training and, and everything like that. The only training, online training, they don't get access to for free is the Ultimate, which is the one we record. I was talking about we recorded in 18. So there, that is a learning management system where you actually do have to answer the questions through the video online training. Um, yeah, so they get access to the free ones. They get access. So some of them are recorded webinars and some of them are actual online training sessions themselves. So there's also the old ZD31. Um, the membership levels, as I said, there's three different levels. Your platinum is unlimited amount of calls. So when I say jobs and everything like that, so say the silver membership gets six diagnostic jobs for 350 bucks a year, and the bulletins, which is near and on 200 bulletins, and the training, that's a pretty good deal, okay, for, for, for a workshop a to invest 350 yeah. bucks. I mean, some people would... Come on, it's two hours you, you, labour. You, that's two how hours labour. How, how many jelly shots is 350 bucks? You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's, uh, and it's priceless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of aeroplane jelly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so the, the thing is that one job is not one phone call. Like a guy, somebody will log a job in. Like we don't intend for jobs to string on for a long time, but there are some jobs where the car, the car will still run, they'll give it back to the customer, it's in a minute fault, you know, or the customer has a spare car. And this is the thing is I've said to so many people, never be afraid to tell the customer that this is not going to happen overnight. Absolutely. This could be 
months, you know. This thing, never give them false information and say, yeah, we know it all, we've sorted out, we'll have it sorted out in a day and slap on a part and give it back to them. And then they're two days down the road, she's going to fault again, they've already spent the money, you're better off leaving in your workshop and be honest with the customer. And I've always said to, I say to all our members, we don't give up on any job. We, that's what you decide, but we encourage you to stick with it and treat it as that investment. It is a, when you get a hard basket car, that is training in itself. Right. You know, that that's is true, the right. probably, unfortunately, and what I say to people is that, you know, one of the, when they log in a job and they'll say to me, one of the first things, and I know this is my body language radar, when he, when he or she says, oh, Clint, this bloody thing's cost me a fortune, I've lost so much money on it, hang on a second. Have you really lost that much money on it? You've only lost money if you've thrown parts at it. Yeah. You know, so let's step back. Okay, well, it has cost you money physically, but realistically, we're learning, you're learning. You're learning that how to, you know, at the end of the day, you fix this problem, you'll decide shit on doing diesels ever again, <laughs> um, which I hope most of them don't. I want them to stick with it because, like you said earlier, Jeff, you know, these guys out there that are shying away, it's crazy. You know, you shy away there's, from too there's, much. There's money, that, there's money there to be yeah. earned. Who knows, one day we may not actually yeah. have diesel. Well, and well, um, um, won't, you, know, you, won't you wish you, you took some of them diesel dollars? But look, exactly. I, saying, I know, like yeah. in the past, well, we've misdiagnosed. I think every workshop has. Oh, and I, I have. Had, yeah, I've had this conversation with my staff before. They're like, oh, you know, how, how do you not have the shits? It's like, well, you know what? That was the cheapest training we've ever took, hasn't it? Like, we'll, we'll do that for <laughs> three, four, three, four of us. All right, we put the wrong part in the car. We made a mistake. We've worked it out now. Um, yeah. You know, we're not going to, we're going to charge a customer for our mistake. We made the mistake. We're going to wear yeah. it. Um, but, you know, next time we won't do this again because now we, we have a different testing procedure or, you know, we're going to look at things differently. We understand the system better. It's always a training process if, if we misdiagnose, you know. Mm. And it's funny because the more you do that, the less, more rare it becomes. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it, it does, you know. You hope. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you, hope so, you don't want to always be learning. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but no, we, we've got a lot of, we got a lot of members and they've said to me later on, you know, in the time of being a member, you know, we've got members that have been members now five, six years, and I, and I love that. You know, they're dedicated to it. It's just a no-brainer. Some of them get to a point where they just go, no, we don't need it anymore, and then a year later they'll join up again. Um, that That's just, you know, their situation at the time and that, or they think they've got this. But there's a lot of members that just, you know, they'll they'll hang on to that job and pursue it, and we will... And, I, you know, we, we just had a job two weeks ago and a bloody CX-5, <laughs> dreaded CX-5, <laughs> you know, and I was this sure, was and I, I, gave him, I gave him all the, uh, the CX-5 Mazda. There's no other CX-5 is there. <laughs> I'm saying this program has been sponsored by Mazda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't mistake it as X-5. That's another problem. Another day we'll talk about X-5s. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, he was... I was adamant. It was one of our bulletins, you know, a lot of it was surging and stalling. It would only do it when it got really hot and we've got a common fault where they block up the EGR cooler. And that's one of the things I'll be covering in that training. Um, you know, and he said it this first time, he said, I'm, I'm just thinking about replacing a suction control valve. And, of course, I go, that's what everyone wants to do, just put a suction control valve on it, you know, but we need to prove it. Don't just throw it on there. It's a diesel world's O2 sensor. That's what do, do, do you know? It uh, is. Okay. If, 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 it is. Go to Mars, if you were oh. to go to Mars with a good telescope, you'll see a pile of airflow meters, O2 sensors, and suction control valves. <laughs> yeah. exactly. And you know, you you know give me a giant pile of them. And you know yeah. you put them there? <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Elon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> going to, going to, we'll, we'll all be in prison together. We'll all, be, yeah, we'll we'll all, right. yeah. we'll all have a good time. Yeah. We'll like, Get a job in the prison workshop. Yeah. yeah. But the annoying part was this, that he only wanted to put on there. I said, no, no. I said, unplug the thing. Just check if it's a normally open type, normally closed type. Mm. That's one of my favourite diagnostics. These are the two types of suction control valves. You know, that throws so many people. 
the, the fact that a vehicle can run with a suction control valve unplugged, you know, it's yeah. great. And uh, but he didn't even test it, unfortunately. And he just put it on there. Now it it annoyed me because I was wrong. The it wasn't the the intake manifold was chockers. It was really bad. It was that bad that his map sensor broke trying to get it out. That's how stuck it was in there. Now the thing is. Had improved it, cleaning the intake and the EGR cooler out improved it, but it had still stalling problems. So it improved the surging, but it still stalled, and it was unfortunately, you know, I, I made a mistake. But then at the end of the day, I mean, he's he's a great member because he's like, Clint, I've learned so much from this. Yeah. You know, that was the thing. He said, I'm not, I'm not blaming you or anything like that. I said, you know, I was to be honest, I was, I was gutted. For that, for you know, a bit of that time, and I'm like, no, oh, hang on, Clint. You always say you're not, buddy. You don't know everything. So uh, you know, the great thing about that, and what I learned from that, is that now I'm going to create a new bulletin for that bloody CX5 Mazda. Helps the next person. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, so um, but yeah, I was actually surprised that was calling the stall, causing the stalling problem. There you go. Yeah, but um, yeah, so that's you know, with the with the membership, it's um. It's over the phone help. We don't do that. That's the thing. We don't do um, text message diagnostics. We do get the guys to send photos and videos through Messenger, which I found is bloody sensational, by the yeah, way. Does help. Messenger transfers the file. It converts your file straight away from any phone to another phone and brings it out clear. Have you ever seen that? No. Somebody sent you a file through your text message and it comes out blurry. It comes all weird. Yeah, it depends on the phone you're using. Depends on the phone. Like I, I use always, Android. I don't know. I, I don't get sent dodgy things by by uh, messenger. You know, <laughs> I stay away from from those. You don't. Yeah. I'll, so I'll, when, I'll, um, I'll send you something in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we we focus on the guys, and then you know, after they've logged the job, we send them through a checklist. So that's where we do interact with emails. We send them through a checklist. We put all the links to the relative bulletins or. Wiring diagrams that we, you know, if they've got access, if they've got access to Haynes, we'll look at the wiring diagram for them and and copy and paste it. Awesome. So we interact through that way, and but everything's, you know, I'll get the guys will start emailing me back the diagnostics, and I'm like, give me a time and they'll call you because it just becomes a mess, like yeah. it just becomes that unknown world, you know. A phone so, calls um, a lot, it really does. Yeah, but look. Um, Oh, that's probably about a, I can tell you about diesel help. I can, awesome. Um, I'm sure, look, uh, you, you know, it, it's, if there's any follow up questions, this. what we'll do, yeah, what we'll do in this when we eventually end up posting it, um, we'll definitely put a link in there. The people need to access you, they can. They I think we need to out. do a, a part one and part two. Oh, it's gone on for long enough. <laughs> yeah. Now, what we'll do, we'll make sure that when we when we post it up there, that it um, they have a very clear path to get to you if they need to. Yep. Oh, there's me, boy. How cute. <laughs> How cute. I've still got my boys. They're just looking at me still. Yeah. My, boy, my boy's lost the plot, unfortunately. Oh, poor thing. Look he's got uh, he's got dementia. But he's just kind of like kicked in the last couple of weeks. He's like, yeah, he's 11. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, he's... Uh, hey, mate, this is the, this to show you. Look how cold it is, mate. Even our dogs were at a jumper yeah. up here. Well, to be fair, mine are, mine are as well, but they're only this big, so. What dog? you got a small dog. What dog do you got? Do you got? We've got two of them. Come on. Come on. Come and say good day. Come on. One of them might actually go in the background because he's actually. There, there's my. Uh, there's one of them. There's my oh, back. <laughs> Look. oh, is it is it dash hound? It's one dash hound. Oh. And come here, you. Come here, you. This is <laughs> this is oh mate that barks too much. Oh, okay. thank you. Hello, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get like. Uh, I say, I actually saw a couple of dash hands yesterday morning. We were walking, but uh, yeah. this is our this is our backyard right stunning. behind us. Stunning. Yeah, well, it's, we're one street back, but um, that's where I've had to increase my ex- daily exercise lately. I've. Uh, Recently been told as, as I get a little bit more aged, they say a, a wine is good when it's aged. Well, clearly I'm not a wine. <laughs> <laughs> I may wine, but I'm not a wine. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Different uh, time. Yeah. So this is, yeah, so uh, are we sending out some invites soon for my 50th and I'm fairly particular about who comes to my events. So uh, 
just so, so we won't be waiting. Crossed. So we won't be waiting. <laughs> I must have been drunk the other night. I have actually invited Jeff Taylor up, so I don't know what happened there. Yeah. Yeah. That, guy must, that guy must be a legend. Yeah. That guy must be a legend. I'm actually um, I'm in uh, Noosa um, a few days. Is that the same after. when you were yeah. in Noosa the week after? I, I think it's like three days after, yeah. Well, yeah, I said, mate, you're welcome to. And, mm. and same of yourself, Costa, as oh, a... You, um, mate. Mate, oh, no, seriously. The, the thing is, people try and keep up with me drinking beer. Uh, Clinton and um, you know uh, when we when we met um, uh, Darren Dahl and Steve Scott in Melbourne, you, you know, I think, <laughs> I, can um, I, I think uh, you know we 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 certainly sent people home, uh, Look, we, you we, know, with some headaches. We, we held our own. We held our own, yeah, even though yeah. our drinks had umbrellas in them. Yeah. Did you yeah, feel well, like? Costas, but did Costas. you feel it was quite a challenge, like you had? <laughs> well, Look, well, no, no. I think the worst thing for me was. Uh, uh, catching COVID uh, in Melbourne, but uh, that's yeah. another story. So, don't, so don't be giving me any strange diseases in far north <laughs> Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on, on that bombshell, there yeah, there's my favourite car. <laughs> <laughs> By favourite, you mean the one that makes the most income, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly, the money maker one. I got, I, I, I actually got a bit of time. I'll, I'll play. Uh, I don't know where this will work. Will the video play? Here we go. This is a video from Fraser Island. This is. <laughs> do you recognise that bloke? <laughs> That's, is that is that? No, who was it? That was me. Oh. So this is a. Uh, so I didn't recognise you with your clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> and is, stop recording now. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a uh, beautiful Fraser Island. If you guys ever get to Queensland. Well, you do get to Queensland again, but you won't get time to get to Fraser. Is that somebody <laughs> digging the San, the San Yong out? Oh, dear. No, that's, that's letting the tyres down on the Prado. There's the old San Yong there. There's the old one, mate. Go oh, it's getting towed the by the Hilux in front, isn't it? No, oh, the, a, barge, the barge was towing us. <laughs> it looks like there's a push-pull affair going on there. The barge was towing us, yeah. So, uh, see, some of the things I've learnt on Zoom today. There you go. It's, uh, there's another place, Coliseum. Oh, lovely being there. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, in 2006 when I went to Auto Mechanica. Yeah, that great. was. Um, that was always on my bucket list until I went. Yeah, another beautiful place. Leave you with a beautiful part of Queensland. Lovely. Finch, Finch Hat and Gorge. <laughs> there the other week, but um, yeah, no, nice chatting to you guys. Nice to you catch too, up mate. with always you. Always a pleasure, and um, I'm sure we'll be doing it again shortly. We will indeed. Hang on a second. I better just close off with our. Um... There we go. I'll close off with the diesel help. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? I'll tell you what, you're definitely one of the most prepared people we've ever spoken <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah. You had everything ready to rock and roll. I love it. Uh, well, you'll have to. I won't show you the photo I was going to show you. You'll have to wait to another I day. See, I want to see it now. Oh, wait, let me stop the recording before Costa, I, I want to see it. Uh, do, do you want to see it? Do you want to see this recording? Uh, hang on. All right, hang on. I'll say goodbye. Go. Let's, say goodbye. Let's say goodbye. Let's say goodbye. Then we can talk about it later on. Yeah. All right, <laughs> then. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you very much, much Jeff pleasure, and uh, Costa. Thanks for yeah, having guys. me along. Look Anytime. forward to training some Garage Network people. I think, I think you broke a record. I think it's the longest ever Zoom we've had. Whoa. I think we might Jeez, actually you know. This is the longest ever Zoom. I needed, I, I needed a wee about 45 minutes. Hold on. It was, how, long, how long was um how long was scanned? I don't know. There was less than this. Yeah, no, this is the longest one. Yeah. Yeah. Did he talk a lot like I, me? I, I, blame, I blame Elon Musk, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to join our private Facebook page if you are an automotive technician. And also subscribe to our YouTube and our podcast channel. They are all called The Garage Network. Thanks guys and see you next time.